Come along to another edition of the wonderful, the marvellous Anxious Earl and Pastor Pete. 
Good to be with you. Cheers. Cheers. Hello, mate. All right, how are you doing? I'm good. Look, we've got two, two Trevor Woods in the house tonight. <laughs> really? Yeah, look, he said hello twice. They got, yeah, look, the, you can't have enough, really. Right. That's what I would say. You can't say. have too many Trevor Woods in, no. the, in, uh, the, in the house. Yeah. So how are you feeling today? You feeling all right? Feeling Life anxious? Ah, right. uh, yeah. Yeah, pretty rough week last week. Yes. But they're yeah, not doing too bad. Doggo's on the mend. Well, yes, good, because uh, people on the learned about him last yes. week. So, yeah. He was, uh, he was a bit wobbly on his feet, wasn't he? He was in the studio, if you if you yeah. caught last I uh, the little dog who belongs to Al, who was wandering around wanders around the studio. He was staggering around, but he, mm. he seems pretty well this week. Yeah, he's doing well. Mm. He's doing well. And today's a special day, as you know. Go on. Why is it? I was gonna I was actually before you tell us about yes. how special today is. Oh yes. How are um, you? Me. I'm um uh, I'm all right, but uh, we live um uh, us two live near the Mersey. So for people tuning in nowhere near the Mersey, you won't know that if you're on the other side of it to Liverpool, clouds of noxious fumes come over and really affect my eyes. Yeah, they're, they're sort of swelling up there. You're talking about the stench? Yeah, well, yeah, the stench of Liverpool. The, I'm, not, I'm not sure that sounds right, especially if we get any, like... Um, <laughs> Wait, there's... Um, uh, I'll tell you one thing, I'll tell, yeah, you one thing I'll tell you one thing I can smell, because we're near the docks, oh, uh, not and it's not enough. fish. It's... Um, I think there's a lot of um, like recycling plants over there. So yeah. you get a smell of like metal and oil. That's it. And yeah. swarfiga. Yeah. Well, all that stuff really affects me. It affects my breathing and my hair. Uh, swarfiga. Yeah, of course. Everyone should use it to just wash up every day. Swarfiga. It kills COVID, you know. Swarfiga. Does it? Oh, yeah. Really? Mm. Is that is that a clinical fact? Yeah, if anything does. So the. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, go on, anyway. let's, just, let's just say, hey, Kate. Hey, Trevor. We we'll hope you're yeah. well this week. Well. Um, Thanks yeah, and for the, oh yeah, for those listening on replay, for this show, just to, you know, we chat and we interact with with uh, people we know in the chat, but some people we know just through the chat. So, uh, if you want to join in in the chat, go go ahead. It'd be great to hear from you. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter if you've seen us before. But also, if you're watching on replay, as I say, put comments below because we'll look at those afterwards. Uh, maybe include you in the next time, next episode, next time we meet. Now, I was going to say, can I say then, the special day now? Yeah, you ready special for day. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, the special day is, it's a, it's a famous uh, town, famous city in the world, named after me, called Petersburg. Oh, yeah. Uh, St. Petersburg, which was, um, uh, which was um, started, launched, what do you do with the city? Uh, I, I, I just named. Intrigued. I'm intrigued to how it was named after you. Well, it's, it's, it was in 1703. So how, when was your birth date? Well, no, that's not the point. It's just before tea, isn't it? 1703. Yeah. Three okay. minutes past five. Oh, no, right. 1703. Yes, na named after um, <clears throat> St. Peter, because it's St. Petersburg. Um, he, he uh, rather than Pastor Petersburg, St. Petersburg. Now, the thing about this city is, it was... Um, if you, I've got a link to an article about it, if you want to just pull it up. I don't know. Before, I, before I pull it up, we, yes. wasn't St. Petersburg known as something else? Uh, well, it was briefly, yes. It was. Um, I think. I think they named it back, wasn't it? Leningrad, St. Petersburg, Leningrad. Then they switched it back. Ah, oh, right. I didn't realise it was switched. I could switch back. I could be wrong. We've got no, an I'll, article. I'll do some check on that. But the, the point about okay. it is that's interesting. Is it was here we are, St. Petersburg. We've got it that. was we, named. Should we go full screen on it? Let's see if we can go full screen. Because interestingly, it was actually uh, started, created, launched, however, in. Um, in uh, in 1703, yes, but on the 16th of May, I think you'll find if you scroll down. Uh, but then they changed the calendar. Uh, 17th. Uh, does it say 16th? Yeah, 16th. I can see it now. Thank you. Yeah, it was founded on May. Founded. That's the word I was searching for. It was founded on May the 16th, but the calendar changed. So now it's May the uh, 27th, uh, where Peter the Great seized control of the land surrounding uh, the Neva. During a protected war with Sweden. Who'd have thought, eh? You know, Sweden seems such an inoffensive country these days. Uh, a simple log cabin where maybe Swedish people stayed. I don't know. Uh, the Sweden. city's first living quarters. So I just love that. Sweden seems like such an inoffensive country you these days. You can't imagine Sweden going to war with, with the big boys, can you? Well, not without huge bell bottoms and platforms, you know what I mean? Mm. You know, and the sign of war. I know exactly and, what you mean, uh, yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, name that band. Uh, Kate or oh, Kate or Trevor get it straight away. Right. So go on, Pete. Carry on. So I mean, uh, th that's interesting. So it, it really is the anniversary uh, because it's actually May the twenty seventh in today's calendar, um, and uh, yeah, that's all I had to say. Really, got some interesting things. Got pictures of the war underneath. 
uh, with horses prancing around. I would say that's probably not looks like a photo. A, looks like um, a still from Dr. Zhivago. Uh, well, very similar. Big war for, I don't know what I was going to say, for no purpose. Um, lot of snow. There may have been a lot of snow going on, and someone's lost the hat, look, uh, running across. Yeah. So, during the 19th century, that happened. Now, here, hey, 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 let's see. we've got something interesting there. In, uh, we've got Lenin doing his funny thing with his hand there. The first, he liked, liked to do that. The first significant event of the 20th century, uh, St. Petersburg, for St. Petersburg, was the revolution, sparked by the events of Bloody Sunday, which some people say when they want to get up, have to get up on a Sunday, when workers protested on Palace Square and were fired upon by soldiers. In response to this revolution, the Russian Duma, the, 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 the um, political place where, they, the place where the meet was met, uh, was, it, was created. It was met with enthusiasm, but its welcome was short-lived. Uh, Russia's unsuccessful World War I campaign increased social unrest. Yes, by November 2017, the situation in the city, now named Petrograd, that's pretty similar, isn't it? Petrograd, Petersburg, uh, was dire indeed. Work has striked. Uh, the city came to a standstill. The Tsar unsuccessfully attempted to dismiss the Duma, who uh, are running things, and the work put the workers back to work. He eventually abdicated. A government was put in place. And the Socialists formed a Soviet, which is a council of workers and soldiers' deputies. Lenin cleverly chose this time to return from exile in Switzerland. At what are we going to say they were at war as well? No, no, he was just he was just there. Um, was warmly received by the peasants, the workers, and the soldiers. He quickly assembled his assembled his Bolshevik party, and in October, new calendar November, nineteen seventeen. After many behind the scenes manoeuvres, the Soviets seized control of the country. And then we're getting to the point we've all been waiting for, which in March nineteen eighteen moved to Moscow. Lenin died in nineteen twenty four, and. St. Petersburg was renamed Leningrad in his honour. There you go. There you go. That's the truth. Right, I've just had an update. Ms. Jules here. Um, let me just switch back to chat for a yeah, minute. Yeah, that's it. That's all uh, we I on. guess we... I need to do that. And then yeah, we need to let's... do that. Yeah, let's have a look what's so, going on. Good by the way, uh, yes. no diet today. Notifications wrong. Oh. Edit the stream info. Oh. Thanks yourself, save the world. It still says it's National No Diet Day. Yeah, um, I know. But um, you see, uh, for I, I've got to say, it's for Anxious Al, every day is No Diet Day, right? Yeah, well, I haven't started yet. I've been thinking yeah. about it. But I've, yeah. I've had points. Thinking about it does a lot, actually. Look, the clue's in the name, like Anxious Al. Oh, yeah. So are you like, telling me you're anxious about it? No, I'm not anxious about the oh, diet. I'm okay. just anxious about other things at the minute and trying a diet won't ah, help me. You can only be so anxious about we, something. All right, okay, Monsieur, give us a title for this stream then. Yeah, we're talk be shows cool. and podcasts. Uh, titles Anxious Out and Pastor Pete Save the World. What notifications should we have? Well, what I mean, uh, we've if got that, actually, some fascinating if that's a notification, stuff. what does it say if you look at the channel? Mm, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we the whole point of the show is we have lots of things to talk about, but it is St. Petersburg Day, so we, you know, we could put that. All right, let's do that then. St. Petersburg Day. Down with Lenin, you should put. Down with Lenin? Yeah. Uh, I wonder if that won't go too well with our Russian comrades in arms on Twitch. No, no, they, they, they don't like Lenin anymore. Don't they? No, no, they've had enough of him. He he he, made, he caused a lot of trouble, you know. Let's just call it St. Petersburg Day. There we go. Updated stream info. So yes, what is so it now, saying now? Yeah, have a look now. Uh, who is it? Majeure. Have a look now. It's yeah, see what it says now on the title. Uh, so th that was. I just... Don't mess with that because I'm messing with this and yeah. that and yeah, this yeah, and yeah, that. Do that. Yeah, you don't yeah. want your attention to take away. No, the um, um. So that was it, really. Except for I did wonder whether it was changed back to St. Petersburg. I had in the back of my mind. I just thought it was, but you know. Maybe I was wrong. Does it say that? Have you got that article still there? Well, let's easy? go back to it. Let's is it back. easy to bring back? Let's just back. scroll up a bit. Just have the answer to my question. Um, there you go. Mod it, it regained its original name in 91. Oh, that was great. With the demise of the Soviet Union, you see. Down with Lenin. Yeah. You see, I think Lenin's amazing because he did all that Russian revolution and took all the time to write all those all those Beatles songs. It was brilliant, wasn't he? It? it was a brilliant man. Yeah. Uh, 
Do you know, the, worst dad jokes. Anyway, so, by the way, Trish has They're not dad jokes. What's no, happening? They're schoolboy jokes. Oh, uh, uh, well, you get this thing. I haven't changed my headphones. I'm still wearing me, me comfy headphones. Yeah. So, Major wants to know... You look like good, a Cyberman. Good evening, chaps. <laughs> what's happening? Uh, what's happening is... Well, we've got uh, a test for you in a minute. All right. Well, just update him because he, he dropped in a couple of minutes late. Oh, what's happening? Well, yeah, so the first part of uh, this... Update him it, on the news. Yeah. Huh? Update him. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to, but you keep interrupting me. What, me? I wouldn't yeah, do that. You know, chat, we've had this conversation off stream, actually. Yeah, about his interruptions. Yes. So, it I was, should do it more, I think we said. So, it was today in 1703, St. Petersburg, named after Pastor Pete was founded. And Correct. that's what that little spin was. Yes. So well, we it was the, we did the day of the week. Uh, we've done it a couple of times, haven't we? We've oh, we did done, International uh, Trombone Day. No, that yeah. was Trombone Week. That yeah. was awesome. That, now, that was a, a big day, and we'll hope to celebrate it again next year with, yeah. um, um, with a trombone, maybe. Yes, yeah, so we need some more international days. Yes, but today's not an international day. It's just that St. Petersburg was not launched. What was the word again? <laughs> Founded. 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 Right, okay. Should we move to next? Uh, yeah, well, you see, this is it's a sort of a test. Okay. Uh, you don't really get anything for it other than... Uh, these were very popular back in the day, but I've not seen them around that much recently. These, Tell me. These sort of a magic eye illusions. And when they first came out, people would say, no, it's not real. And uh, you have a sort of a pattern, and if you look at it correctly, you can see a 3D image, which others can't. Okay. And there is a trick to doing it, but if you put if you if you go to the article that I've got from BuzzFeed, and then um, scroll down, I so say don't use that one. Oh. Uh, that's just an example. And if you go down there, and it's got the book, it's talking. This is it talking about it. Um, if you scroll down even further, it's got some examples. And I don't know if you can, that is one. And I looked at that earlier. Uh, if you make it, I don't know how big you can make that. That's how we do. Um, just make it as big as possible, and see if people can do it now. What you do is, I don't know how big that is, is on your screens at home, but it, uh, if you're looking on a computer, if you're on a phone, well, I looked at it on a small laptop. Um, what you need to do, if you're unfamiliar with these, is you get reasonably close, closer than 30 centimetres, closer than a ruler, and you, you uh, look through it. Now, if you can't do that to look through it, look away at something in the distance, look across the room, and look back, keeping your eyes the same you know, looking through it. Or what some people do it like this, they uh, uh, look past with one eye and have it in front of the right eye and then the other eye and open it. Anyway, either way, you've got to look at it as though the screen is a window. You're looking through to something. Yeah, I've got it working. Yeah, and you should be... And I'm not very close to the screen at the moment, so I can't do it, but I might move in a moment and have a go. But I saw that one. What? What? Uh, has anyone in the chat seen it? Yeah. Can you see what it is? This is the only one I looked at. I wanted to do it live with you, the others. So uh, I saw that this one, I could see it. Yeah, see, the way I do it is I go boss side, look sort of down my nose cross side, look at it, and then it kind of just comes into focus. Oh, you go cross side? Okay, well, that's another, another technique. I've never been able to do that. So I'm just, I don't know if my, I'm it, going near the microphone now because I'm going to stare yeah, at right. it. Have you, have you got it to work? I, I got it earlier. I can't do it now. Let me have another go. How about the people in the chat? Anyone said? Have you had a look? No, no one said anything yet. Yeah, I've got it now, but I'm virtually on the screen. <laughs> well, that's okay, but um, I'm trying to figure out how... Maybe to... I'll bring it up on my, my little screen here. And I don't know how to describe it, though. Well, it's sort of like a tunnel into yeah. the thing, yeah. It's a tunnel with clouds? Would you say? Yeah. It's, first off, I thought they were cakes. It's like a tunnel through space, I think. Yeah. A tunnel through the sky. Has anyone else got that? Anyone? I'm going to call it up on my little phone screen here and see whether that... Will... It's easy to see. If you can go down... If you go down to the... Uh, I think there are some others below. Can I go down? Let's see what we've got. Oh, right, you see? There's another one. Uh, yeah, um, okay, I've got it on my little screen now, and have a go. I haven't tried this one, so I'm yeah. doing it with you. I've got it. I'm nearly there. 
No way. I've got it. That is crazy. I've got some something floating. I've got that one. That looks like my knitting. It, it's, it's like something floating in front of it, isn't it? That's what I've got. Um, Do you want me to tell you what I think you're looking for? Yeah, I can see something. I can't quite figure out what it is. Yeah, tell me what you what do you what do you see? The second one was easier. Go on, Monsieur. Tell them what they what, what it is. I thought the second one was harder. By the way, I remember these years ago. They're good fun. Right, is everyone? Anyone else see what it is? Anyone said, okay, have you seen the chat? It says what it is below the image. Ah, oh, he's right. Does it, does yeah. It? Oh, right. Uh, yeah, it's a laughing emoji with oh, the... Oh, well, we'll have to try not to... Um... Hang on, let me just switch this... Yeah, so it's got the kind I of didn't like... I didn't realise it said below <laughs> I can see the emoji at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bugger. <laughs> there you go. Now do it. Oh, you already know the answer. Um, yeah... It's very good actually because it's got like the um, greater than, no, less than and greater than eyes, hasn't it? And a tongue sticking out. Yeah, it's quite good. Got it, Pete? I can tell what it is now. I couldn't quite, I, I can see the thing. It took, I got the top bit of it. Yeah, that's what I got, yeah. And then the bottom bit was a bit difficult to yeah, reveal. Yeah. It, uh, I had to move my uh, move it uh, uh, so I could, because right. it's in 3D. Anyway, yeah, I could sort of see it. Uh, that okay. one, I wouldn't have seen it had I not. Okay, let's fade back to here and then I'm going to bring the next one up. Uh, yeah, get it ready so we don't have the name. Yeah. Yes, right. And just get rid of that. So that Miss sure don't tell me what it is. Ah, oh, come on. No. Actually, if you if you click on it, you won't. Go, I've got it. If you click on the answer, it tells you what it really is. There's a few choices underneath. I hadn't realised this. What? Yeah, I hadn't done this. If you go to underneath oh, yeah. the, on yeah. that one, it's got three different, four if, different ones. And the answer is, it's ah. the tongue out emoji. Ah, it was a tongue out emoji. Okay, let's switch this back. Fade. Yeah, you're right. So, so click a, on tongue out emoji now and it'll say you're correct. If you click on it. Yay. That's what you're meant to have seen. That's what I saw. I could see, I couldn't see that, but I could see the eyes. Yeah, I got the eyes first, mm. then I got that. Ah, okay. Oh, that's quite cool. Oh, so now we know. Let's go up to the other one. See what ah, this a, a spiral, spiral, I think. It, yeah. yeah, it was a spiral, yeah. That's, yeah, and that's oh. what, yeah. Yeah, that's a bit lame, isn't it, in the form of spirals? Yeah, that it wasn't not very well drawn. It wasn't quite like that. But anyway, um, yeah, well, I yeah. It's, so actually, it doesn't is, matter if they can see it. What is no, it, no, it doesn't matter. Let's what this purple pattern is. Right, I've got that on my uh, phone screen in front of me now, so oh, I'm let going me to have, have a, a go as look. well. Yep. Um, yeah. I've got it. Have you got it? No. I can't see it. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, what really amazes me is how on earth did someone figure this crap out? It's Yeah, it's very clever, isn't it? I'll, uh, I'll try on the big tree. Has anyone in chat got it? Can you see? I'm still looking at the... Well, I've got, I can see it. I don't know whether I'm not seeing the whole picture. Do you want to see the options? Yeah, show me the options. Hmm. Well, we go back to what I saw. Kate still hasn't got any of them. Okay. I can see what, the, I, I've found the answer one. I found out what it was. Well, to me. Come on, monsieur, I've got to get this it one. It looks like a vase to me. It looks like a vase. Yep. Does it? Mm -hmm. I need. I can't just be me versus you. Well, that's what I could see, but I can't see the flowers, so I'm doing something wrong. Or maybe it's because well, I'm. Well, no, isn't screen. flowers an option? No, no. So it's either a uh, oh, vase with flowers. All I could see was the vase. I could see what I think is a vase, but I could be wrong. Okay. Well, what, what I, do you think it is? I think it's a heart. Oh, right, you think it's a heart? Oh, I th I, I, well, okay, click it. Let's see which Shall one. Shall I? You got, yeah. I didn't, that is not what I saw. <laughs> really? You see, I saw some of the... Um, I thought it was a strawberry uh -huh. shape. No, I didn't. I saw 
some of the things coming out, those patterns coming out, and it looked like it was uh, like a uh, cylinder. Yeah, right. I didn't see it at all. Well, okay. the way it looked to me is it was like a heart, yeah. but at a 45 degree angle, if you right. look at my okay. hand. Oh, like, I see. So yeah, it wasn't like that, it yeah. was kind of like that. Yeah. And I thought originally it was like a strawberry. So, should you have a look at the next one? Uh, I'll try to bring the next one up. Yeah, okay, got it. There's something spooky in the depths of this image. Oh. Spooky, what are the choices? Give me some choices. Give me, give me a chance. A ghost, because... a skull, a spider on a web, a witch. I'm sure can't help. He's eating his dinner. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Oh, something's coming through. That sounds like, that sounds like, what was that from? Uh, that was from Charlie in the Chocolate Factory and Mike TV. Oh, okay, if you say so. Uh, right, I've got it. Anyway, so, clearly, uh, Majul's from down south because he used the phrase dinner. He's not eating his tea. He's, he is really, though. He just doesn't know the word, proper word for it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I've got this. In fact, it should just be tiny, tiny bit lower. Not that much. Okay, uh, I can't make this one out, so it's going to have to be someone from the, from the chat. I, I need someone from chat to help. Actually, does that make a difference? If I go down a bit, yeah. Yeah, it has moved up a bit. Yeah, so um, any answers in the chat? And then you can give you... I could. I just can't tell what it is. I can't see it. Okay. Well, we'll go for another 20 seconds. Yeah, okay. Um, I think it, it's a lot easier, to be fair to the people in the chat who can't see it. Look, it's a lot easier when you've got a proper quality image, you know, printed out and in front of you. Um, they do sell books of this still today. Um, people keep them as coffee table things, you know, amaze your friends and all your enemies, that sort of thing. Really? Not saying anything, but I'm walking with dogs, watching you on my phone. You know, that is that, you know, bro, that is dedication. That, yeah. We, He's watching like us that. on his mobile um, data. Yes. Walking the dog. I, I'm going to I'm going to suggest something. Is, I'd like to know his dog's name. Uh, can we have the names of the dogs, please, and breed? Yeah, yeah but that's dedication. That. You're out. And also, uh, just a bit of word of advice: try just listening if you're walking, because you might go and st walk into a tree or something. Yeah. Just a suggestion. Unless it's the dogs are running around and you're just standing there watching. I think Trevor knows what he's doing. Do you think so? Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Let's go back to this. Right. So, you want me to put my answer in? No one's come back. Yeah, yeah. I I I couldn't make it work for that one. Uh, that's cool. I, okay. I I I couldn't see that. Is that what you saw? Yep. That's why I clicked skull. Yeah, I know, but um, they were a bit off on the others, I thought, on the spot. Well, if I'd have thought it was something else, I'd have clicked someone else, wouldn't I? No, no, but you might have thought, it's not a very good skull, you might have thought. Uh, I, I didn't think it was a particularly great skull, but it was a good, it was a it, skull. It was a skull, right, okay. Right. This one, right, okay, yeah. Something hiding in the snow, penguins, kids, sledging, a deer, or polar bears. Okay, right, I'll try on the big screen. I'm. You can't see me, but I'm edging up to the Can big screen. any bigger? Because right, I'm jumping the size of this, this one up. Oh, yeah, I've got this one. I think this one's pretty obvious. I haven't got it yet. Pippa is Border Collie and Spinner is a Corgi and Jack is a Russell Cross. No way. I'm eating dinner too. Can't see anything. <laughs> Hang on. There's yeah. not, there's not many. Know, of, uh, no, I can see this one. Uh, there, it's at the whisper, bottom of the screen. Whisper, whisper. But it's at the bottom. It's at the bottom of it. It's not at the top. It's in the, the sort of bluish bit. If it, that's where you're looking, that's what I can see. Anyway, shall I tell you what? Shall I tell everyone what I can see? Well, not. Can I just finish looking? Yeah, yeah you finish looking. I'll leave it. Tell me I haven't, you I haven't I given up so. like you did. You gave up. I I, I have yet yeah. to give up. Okay. Well. Yeah, you carry on. Maybe you'll get it. Well, the choices are down below. You can have a look. Got it? No. 
that's really weird. This is definitely the hardest I've been able to get into the the cross-eyed, bug-eyed look. The zone. reason I could I could see it is the sort of a pattern of it, of what it is. Even in you know, I could see the pattern of what it was going to be, and then I saw it. I can see certain diamonds, and I'm just trying to zoom in on that now. But uh, I'm attuned to this because this particular thing is a favourite of one of my children. So I'm attuned to seeing this shape. Well, I'm guessing what it is, but I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Come on. Anyone in chat got it? I mean, I guess they're giving up. Give, us, give us a second. Give us a second, Pete. Hang on. Yep, I'll give it. Yep, go ahead. Teddy bears. Is teddy bears an option? Um, I didn't see teddy bears. I saw it's penguins. It's not an option. I saw penguins. Um, I mean, that doesn't mean I'm right. That is what I saw. Because like, you see the sort of loopy shapes in the bottom. I thought that, oh, they might be penguins because it's a snowy scene. And then when I went in, I concentrated on that blue area, I could see a few penguins. The sort yeah. of line of them. I haven't been out of focus in on this at all. Can I do it on that side? Oh, I think I'm doing it on the other screen. I found it... Uh, no, no, not quite. Um, I think I can... Is it like... Um, I think I can see three. Three penguins. Polar bears. Is it polar bears? Well, polar bears is one of the answers. I could see... Uh, I well, could we see... need someone to adjudicate this. We? So we well, well no, you just click. What, see what the answer is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I could see three penguins. What but... should we do? Well, we, we'll have to go with our guests. What do they say? Polar, be um, polar bears. Okay, we'll take that then. Yeah. Uh, I mean, although I've Pixel not done Priest, one of the others. So. Pixel Priest is off on one. Are you, Revo, are you having a few vinos? <laughs> it might be cat's heads. These are the answers. <laughs> it's one of these four. Yeah. But cat's heads. Um, yeah. It might be eaten. Maybe it's cat's Medi heads medium. in the mouths of polar bears. I like it, yes. Right, so well, I don't like let's, it. But, uh, let's see if Kate is right. Yes. Uh, it's penguins. penguins. Yeah, three penguins. That's what I saw. Yeah. Oh, Monsieur went polar bears as well. There we go. So, uh, um, is this a, um, Should we do this one? Uh, I don't know how many. I don't you're bored. Uh, I'm not bored. I wonder what the uh, what the people watching were thinking. Uh, I'm really uh, excited by this. There's quite a few actually. Yeah. Well, I tell you what. Let's leave it here, and uh, we'll come back to it. We could always go back to it. It, it, it. You see, if you're not seeing them, it's a bit boring. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. All right, I, I didn't it. see one of them, but mm. uh, even then, I, I'm not seeing them that clearly. I think it's on the screen. It's more difficult. Uh, maybe. Although at home, I, I saw. I that did all right, but then I'm it. I'm in front of this screen, aren't I? Okay. It's how close you can get to it as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm just going to call up on my. I've got the phone up here because this has got our list of subjects on. Let me just call it up. Okay. Right. <clears throat> yes, we've got more to talk about because mm. this is a conversation show. I mean, what else <coughs> do you do? A conversation oh. show. The show. It's a show, you know. I got him. Um, well, I, I Let's thought... Have a look at your list. Well, I thought there was... A, th this is some another thing that used to be talked about. It used to come up as an amusing thing to talk about quite often. And that is weird laws. There were some strange laws. Shall we go uh, full screen? Yeah. Uh, Kate says, you, yeah, yeah, on um, for the going back to those magic eye, you really need the full quality image. It was just a just a, for a bit of fun. Uh, these are top weird laws from around the world. So, if you want to uh, go th through them, uh, I'd see, um, I think you're a weird law expert, find out what our quiz. So, do we do take the quiz or uh, just read it? Uh, go for well, let's do the quiz, let's go true or false. What happens if you click on it? I don't know. Oh. Right. Uh, let's just read through it first. I don't okay. think we can just listen right. to you. Read. Uh, no, well, I'll do the first one. Right. Let's see what's what. Right, okay. Uh, Parliament's famous Salmon Act of 1986 states that it's illegal to hold salmon under suspicious circumstances. Uh, <laughs> That's a typo, isn't the, it? How the, can you say Section 32 of the Salmon Act of 1986 stipulates that it's an offence to handle salmon. Under suspicious circumstances, the section creates an offence in England and Wales for any person who receives or disposes of any salmon 
uh, in circumstances where they believe or could reasonably believe that the salmon has been illegally fixed, fi fished. Sorry. The maximum penalty is two years imprisonment. The context well make, may well make the laws less weird, but even so, suspiciously holding salmon is a pretty funny offence to be arrested for. Not funny if you get two years for it, I'll tell you. Is that Alex Salmon? Because he looks like he should be illegal. Um, it, right. Ooh. 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 Below the belt. Hang on, hang on. Wasn't the last... Hang on, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's... 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 let's ooh. ooh. So, wasn't ooh, there... Yes. Wasn't there a lot of stuff going on with the... Uh, is it the... Is it the SNP? Was she? S what's, what's her name? Who's the leader of Scotland right now? Nicola Sturgeon. See, Sturgeon, that's interesting. The, her, her name is Sturgeon, Sa and his he's name is Salmon. Almost. Yeah. Isn't he got a D at the end? Salmon. So. Yeah, but everyone pronounces it Salmon, doesn't they? Yeah, it might, as, it might as well be a Salmon, to be yeah, honest. But yeah, wasn't, a there a load of, wasn't there a load of sexual allegations against him? And was, yes. some kind of cover-up from the current government? Yes. And all this sort of... Do you of... think that they were holding Salmon suspiciously? Well, uh, which? These... The government. These these um, these accusers. No, no, the government. You know, the government was holding him in suspicious circumstances. Uh, yes. Well, that could well be true, but um, I think that there's obviously some smoke on their side, yes. and that yeah. that now that is it. However, I, I really. think possibly this is about real salmon, but I you know, I wouldn't swear to it. Yeah, I think you're right. Mm, yeah. But yeah, nice one. Uh, no, Shall well, I try this one? Try this one, yes. What is this law about? Okay, if you chickens? own any chickens in Quitman, Georgia, yes. it is illegal to let them cross the road. Yeah, okay. Simply put, the law essentially wants owners to have their chickens their chickens under control at all times. This makes sense when you imagine the danger of letting farm animals run about. But the specific... The sp Specific that <laughs> nice try. Go on. The specificity that of the law about not allowing chickens to cross the road rings true to the joke and makes for a funny read. Georgia likes to ensure the safety and sacredness of their chickens, as in Gainesville, Georgia. You have to eat fried chickens with your bare hands. Keep your forks away from them. The law describes chicken as a culinary delicacy sacred to its municipality. Perhaps this is why chicken deserves a specific transport safety law. Mm. So is that Georgia, US? I, I would say that's quite yeah, likely. Check out Unbelievable Strange US Laws. I assume it's associated with that, not Georgia. Or is that Georgia with a J? I don't know. I think they're both spell, well, the same with English uh, okay. spelling. Because Georgia, I guess... Over at the other Georgia may have another spelling in locally. Yeah. Okay, Australia's uh, th th these. I mean, they are quite funny, but um, that wasn't really about crossing the road, was it? It was just keeping chickens under control. Uh, Australia's second most populated state uh, says it's illegal to change a light bulb unless you are a licensed electrician. Under Victorian law, changing a light bulb without a valid license to do so was against the law. Taking your light into your own hands brought a fine of 10 Australian dollars. However, a revision to the 19, 1998 Electricity Safety Act updated this law. A spokesman for the Energy Safe Victoria said, while the Electricity Safety Act makes it illegal to do your own electrical work if you are not licensed, changing a light bulb and removing a plug from a socket were specifically exempted from this requirement under order in Council G17. Thank goodness for that. That is bonkers. There's nothing like a committee right. to sort things out. Right? Let's squeeze through these then, because they're a bit unfunny. Uh, Milan in Italy states that it's a, it is a legal requirement to smile at all times except at funerals or hospitals. I think that's fair enough. I don't think yeah, that, to... that sounds bonkers. Uh, what's with the long face? In Milan, the law compels you to smile. It is prescribed by the city regulation from Austro-Hungarian times that was never repealed. Exemptions included funeral goers, hospital workers, and those at the bedsides of the ill family member. For everybody else, there was no excuse for being glum. The alternative being a fine. This has got to be one of the weirdest laws of all. That's one of the ones we should introduce. Wouldn't it be yeah. great, everyone walking around, smiling? You, you could pretend that everyone was happy. 
In Florida, <laughs> it's illegal to pass wind in a public place after 6 p.m. on Thursdays. Now, I think uh, as right. Alan, Alan Pete goes out on Thursdays, I think we should introduce that here. There is some debate over this one. It's certainly... Hey, well, you know, the what, funny thing is... <laughs> The only person around here is past wind after 6 p.m. on a Thursday is you. Yeah, well, yes, but at least I did it live on air. You see, yeah, I wasn't absolutely. trying to hide it. There is some debate over this one. It is cer certainly is a forgotten law and has never really been enforced in Florida. It was probably written in the 1800s and forgotten since. It is not clear why this ever became a law or a rumoured law in the first place. Well, they're probably just farting around, weren't they? Yeah, probably. Number six. Oh, up. there you go. Read for the second line up. What? Chat. Chat. Within Chester City Walls. Yes. Yeah, read from the second line up. Second line up? Yeah. One was easier. Second line down. That's what I meant. It's believed there is an old law which allows you to shoot a Welshman with a longbow after midnight. Now, I don't know if that is a law, but it's long been my practice, so I, I, I'm hoping it's fine. Well, you must have picked it up from somewhere. I've yeah. heard that same law. Yeah. You can't tell we're married, can you? Right, go on. What's the next one? What's your favourite law-related film or TV show? Uh, uh, that's some rubbish, right? Okay. It is against the law to have a sleeping donkey in your bathtub after 7pm. Now, this is terrible, isn't it? Because what am I meant to do now? What do I do with the donkey? Yeah. In Arizona, this law was brought into effect due to a public menace case in 1924 a merchant used to allow his donkey to sleep in a bathtub. The town was flooded when the local dam broke and the donkey was washed a mile down the valley. The donkey survived, but locals spent a lot of time and manpower to save the animal. The law was passed shortly after. Thank goodness for that. Go on. It is against the law not to walk your dog at least three times a day in Turin, Italy. That, that, that's great, isn't it? That's wonderful. Uh, look, dog owners in Turin, Italy... Will be fined up to 500 euros if they don't walk their pets at least three times a day under a new law from the city's council. Italy considers itself an animal loving nation, and in many cities, stray cats are protected by law. To enforce the law, Turin police would rely largely on the help of tipsters spotting cruel treatment by neighbours. Turin has the most stringent animal protection rules in the country. They even ban fairgrounds from giving away goldfish in bags. Well, I mean, I think that's illegal here, isn't it? It's seen as a cruel... I don't know. Can you not still I do don't think, I don't think there's a specific I, I, law, but it's well, seen as being I, cruel. I have to admit, it's been some time since I've gone to a fair. Uh, I was. I saw a, uh, a circus for the first time in a long time in Edge Hill in Liverpool. Really? Uh, where I was picking up my kids from school. When was that? Uh, yesterday. All right. And uh, the uh, it's in the car park of a... Uh, a furniture shop, a big, a big warehouse type furniture shop, um, and it said "big kid" and a big kid circus, and there was a sort of there was a big top, but it had a huge superstructure to it, but the, the it wasn't that big, and I wondered, however, if inside you walked in and there was just this ten foot high kid, and that's all it was. I don't know. You're not allowed to have animals or anything. I mean, you go. Well, why do you go to the circus? You go to the circus to see. The lions eat the keeper, and then uh, and then you and the elephants do they stand on the do headstands, don't you? Yeah, that's what you go for. I mean, what Marion? Uh, uh, what I hio? It is illegal to eat donuts while walking backwards. Now, I yes, that's almost certainly true because that's a ridiculous thing to do, isn't it? Why? I mean, if you eat a donut walking backwards, then it would be um, a ton ood. Um, which is just a nonsense word. It, um, what did that say within Chester City Walls? Oh, that was the shooting a Welshman after midnight. Oh. That's not the uh, that's not the donut law. Yeah. Eating, also a, funny, there eat, was a, eating a donut, not spelling it back. With oh, a spoon. It, oh, oh, I see. Yeah, yes, yes. Now I understand. Now the um, we had twenty people here a minute ago. So you <laughs> said that, and everyone's left. Right. Okay. Um, what were we talking about? Yeah, circuses. Circuses. Circus. Is it circus? Circus must be the plural for circuses. Circus. Circi. No, I think circus and now, circuses. Okay, where, have you ever been to a circus? Uh, have I ever been to... Uh, well, has anyone else been to a circus? I'd, I'd like to continue a conversation about circus now. Yes. Um, and what I'd expect to get see now in a circus. Yeah, would you I don't think I've ever been to a circus, to be honest. Really? Oh. 
I have a long, long time ago. Were you a child or? I was a child, yes. Yeah. Oh, and do you I saw. Where, do you remember I, where it was? I don't remember where it was or when it, when it was. It must have been about 1970. Okay. And it had elephants. Yeah, well, it would have had all animals then, wouldn't it? And, and they'd have been eating each other and whipped census by the, um, what's, it, what's the guy? Who... Well, I don't remember any lions. I think I would have remembered that, but I certainly remember the elephants. Yeah. See, I've seen circuses on telly. But no, I never, I've never, I don't think I've ever been to a circus. There's a, there's a convention with the uh, sort of traditional circus, isn't there, of um, you have the clown in the white makeup who's sort of serious, and then you have all the... The, the, sorry, the clown, which well, is serious. He's got a, a, there's a white clown. He's a serious clown. Uh, people know this. Come on, in the chat. I'm not being mad. You have a serious clown who has a, in white makeup. He doesn't have the big mouth. And he has a white hat and he's dressed mainly in white. And then you have isn't the... That, isn't that a mime artist? Uh, uh, is the white clown. That's a mime. That's not a white clown, you spoon. Yeah, no, 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 he's a white clown. Have a, have a look him up, yeah. Look him up. Okay, let's look. Uh, circus, white clown. Or right. Billy Smart Circus, um, white clown. Is it Billy Smart? Well, uh, that was a famous let's old just circus. Let's Circus, white So I'm looking clown. it up on my little device here. Go on, then. Oh, whatever. Why have I got Yahoo as my default flipping search engine? Whatever. Yeah, and I, I think you'll find, you probably know this chat already, that the white clown is uh, is a staple of the circus. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, let me see if I, right, I should be in Google. That's why I'm... Boy, it's wrong with this. I, I don't Google. Find, I find lots right. of... Right, uh, circus. I'm on the wrong section. Um, let's have a look. Yes, I agree. Do what you... are the four types of clowns? Right, I see you're a on white about. face clown, apparently. Not white clown, white face clown. You're on about this geezer. Let me show it. Ready? He's called a white face clown, apparently. I just saw it. Yeah, that's the um, the one I'm talking about. You say, can you see the one in the middle with the red? I thought he had a white outfit as well. I was misremembering. This one? That's that, yeah, that one. That's the sort of thing. He's the serious clown. Well, he's not, yeah, he's not, he's not as goofy as the others, yeah. yeah. And then you have the ones who just mess around with the big shoes and the car that falls apart. Um, so, yeah, uh, you have all the different, they're the stock characters, in other words. And then you have the ringmaster, and then you have, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, you have all those standard parts of it. Uh, yeah. So there we are. Now, what well, I, I uh, these days there's I, a comment there. There's a comment there. Yeah. He is the sophisticated yeah, yeah. clown, as opposed to the clumsy. August. August. Yeah, I don't know why. It's well, August. see, I, I, don't I, know the I thought the white clown was like the mime artist. No, well, I think mime artists are a separate thing. They're a separate, whole separate act. No, I think you're right, but I I didn't recall or knew yeah, that no. there was a white clown. Anyway, anyway, clowns. Yeah, well, clowns. I'd, you, I'd you, expect to see clowns. That's what I was trying to say. Do you like clowns? Uh, not really. No. I was going to say they're all kind of human, aren't they? Rubbish. No, I don't, I don't really. really. I, uh, well, in they're, they're rubbish. Thank you. Yeah. No, I don't like. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not a fan particularly of clowns. Although I sort of slapstick type humour if it's done well. Uh, Laurel and Hardy, doing who did their slapstick humour very slowly, were funny. Yeah. That and the Three Stooges. Didn't like them. Um, I liked Laurel and Hardy could do it because they slowed it down, which uh, which is an unusual thing to do, and it was very so it worked very well because you you built up the anticipation of something. Okay, was I've never happen. been a big fan of. But clowns. anyway, but uh, then you have the trapeze artists, so you do have people doing dangerous things, shot out of a cannon. Um, that's that class of thing, and as I mentioned, I think I mentioned this in a previous episode. What one of the best uh, sort of thriller films is one of the James Bond films, surprisingly, with Roger Moore in, in that he mainly played James Octopussy. Bond for laughs. And I think it's, I think Octopus. I think you're right. It's got a chase with a, he's dressed as a clown. Yes, and that's a very good film. It's not just a good Bond film. It's a very good film. I think. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's a good film. Yeah, it's not bad, Rashi. I'm thinking about and that all, particular uh, sequence is very yeah, good. Yeah, it's a bit scary. But he, in he's, a Bond film, what? Yeah, one of the baddies in there is a knife thrower. Yes, 
there's, there's twins. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So um, that was the thing I was going to say, actually, before you went down the Bond route, was knife throwing. Or axe yes, throwing. Right. Yeah, yeah. There's lots of have, dangerous stuff. Yeah. Have you seen any of those ones where they go wrong? No. Yeah. Do they? I guess they do go wrong occasionally. Yeah, they kind of go wrong a bit. You know, it's like it's like they're given a, a, an axe to someone who doesn't have a clue how to throw it. Yeah. And um, yeah, I don't think anyone's died, but um, you know, missing yeah. eyebrow, top of the head, you know, that sort of stuff. Top of the head's. A bit... Yeah, not, not, the top not, of the not, not like that. Oh, you know, maybe a bit like that. I oh, don't know. But yeah, well, no, very, very dodgy. Sword swallowing. No, sword swallowing, yeah, that, oh, that no, could that's go not, wrong. Yeah, that's not... Sorry? It could go wrong, I suppose, but um, the, there's the, there's flame... The, what do they call it? The flame throwing. Flame throwing, yeah. Is it, or is it flame breathe? What do they call it? It's not fire throwing. breathing, isn't it? Is it fire breathing? Flame throwing? Is that, well, yeah, I think yeah fire, and they fire, actually have some stuff breathing. in there. They sort of spit stuff, don't they, out of their mouth? Yeah, fuel. The effect, yeah. Yeah, fuel. And so yeah, the, all that. But notice that a lot of it is actually dangerous. People are standing on horses' backs and going round. You expect yeah. as well, don't you? Um, and, and then, which and I don't think is as dangerous as a um, trapeze routine with no net. If they do it with no net, yes, yeah, yeah, you'll probably yeah. die. Yeah, and we get um, knife throwing. Uh, no, and, and cannonballs probably not good. And the the that and the balancing the balancing yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah, when tight road walking, tight yeah. Road walking. Now that Cirque du Soleil circus yeah, yeah. Um, just does that, doesn't it? It just does feats of agility, etc., and those sort of things. Um, it doesn't have any of the animals. Uh, it, it already was in place like that when countries in the West, at least, started to ban animals because, ban, ban the animal um, animal acts because of the cruelty. And, of course, it, it is cruel because you're... The only way you can get them to behave so... Uh, precisely, is to beat the crap out of them. Well, I don't. It's, I'm sure it's not as simple as that, but it's not. Ex uh, I would have thought it was wasn't exactly a good existence for them. No. Yeah, animals deserve to see. Shall we? I don't know. Is there are there any fans of animals in circuses? I know some people say bring it back, but um, well, I, I prefer to see animals in, in their in natural the habitat. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Enjoy themselves. So that know. poses a question here. So we haven't gone off piece yet, and it's about time we did. Right, so we did a bit there with circuses. Um, what was the question what we, were we were looking at? Like, yeah. We were looking at, um, oh yeah, weird laws. We were looking at weird laws, but, but it, going it, they were all right, but they weren't that funny. No, 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 yeah, exactly. But And it's been that time we're off piece. So what is your view on zoos? Zoos, I think zoos are great, as long as they're properly run. Uh, you, can, you can run a zoo such that the animals are happy. Uh, the simple thing you can do, which actually they do with humans as well now, um, if you... Is that he, called, he, is, that's called work, isn't it? Here's an example of, of something that you could simply do in a zoo. That I remember I, I read this in, I was a fan of Gerald Durrell's books. I don't know if anyone knows them. Gerald Durrell, no. My Family and Other Animals is, I look is it famous. Up? But he ran a zoo, he went Jersey Zoo, he founded it, and I think it was called Jersey Zoo. What um, was his name? Gerald Durrell. Gerald and Durrell, D-U-R-R-E-L. He, uh, he used to go and... Uh, Go around sort of on safari collecting animals and selling them to zoos. And then he changed to produce his own zoo because he saw that the animals weren't being kept correctly. And the only animals he kept were ones that were, uh, you, it would help the survival of the species and that sort of thing yeah. if you bred them in a zoo. So it was like a conservation effort. Um, now, I don't think that's the only reason that you can hold them. But my view is if you've got the animals... Uh, in captivity, it, by studying the behaviour, it, it's possible to work out how to keep them such that they are happy and they don't. You could, you've got signs like, um, you know, there's the classic one of polar bears in captivity. You see them walking up and down the same few meters of the of their cage because it's too small for them. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got to have it bigger, big enough for them. But a lot of animals they were were kept in cages in in zoos in the past, and they they would have a whole row of cages like this. You have a whole row of cages on the other side and they could see into the other cages and they get angry with the other animals and get disturbed by them. All you have to do is switch. So if that's your row of cages, you just have them like that. So they can't see each other. They just add a, add a slight well, angle. I they can't see into each other's cages. The thing about and they can't see opposite because it's at an angle. Yeah, it's a simple thing like that. It's just design. Sorry, just to finish. When I said, and it do it to humans, they do that in design of towns as well these days. So you can't see into the uh, to the windows opposite. 
Yeah, but the natural habitat of a polar bear. Yes. It's not a cage. No, it's on top of. Uh, um, so you know, you're thinking, is it Arctic? Is it Antarctic? No, I think it's on top of a fox's mint. That's what it used to have, wasn't it? A fox's mint. Um, no, I know it. Uh, I know that it's in so, the Arctic. Uh, yeah. And you know, they they travel yes, around. Polar bears never hundreds eat penguins. Of miles. Because they don't live on the same continent. Correct. Right. But they would but, if they could. Uh, yeah. They, they eat quite a few seals, I think. But, um, That's their yeah, main but it, source. It's not, yeah. it's not, you know, I think the thing about zoos, my view, I've been to some zoos and a um, few in the UK, went to one in Thailand once and I went to Taronga Zoo in Sydney, Australia. All right. Uh, now, the one in Sydney, Australia yes. was a fantastic zoo. It was a great zoo. So what was good about it? Uh, I think it did its utmost to look after the animals and it was clean and you could see that the animals were being looked after. The Excuse me. <coughs> the place I went to in Thailand was a different kettle of animals and uh, they're performing... Um, don't, um, this was back in 1995. They're performing elephants and all this sort of stuff. And... Um, Chester Zoo is very good, yes, I agree. Uh, and uh, they were rubbish. But I still don't like Taronga Zoo either. I don't like zoos. Oh, okay. I really don't like zoos uh, because... Uh, I know you could say, you could argue, that, look, if it's for conservation, mm. all right, and it's to try and recover species, for example, that are in, uh, looking at the, um, the threat of extinction, you could almost say, well... Well, three things, really. One is, should they go extinct? Secondly is, um, um, I understand that for a conservation sort of entity that they need to somehow fund it, so therefore they show off their own animals to get the money to actually do the conservation. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's not quite... It doesn't resonate with me, and I've had this conversation with a few people, and um, I'm sure people have tried to convince me of how wonderful zoos are, but I also know that I like them. Yeah, I don't think much of them. Here's what I like: I think I know the kids and Revo have been to Chester yeah. Zoo. Someone said that um, I don't like to see birds in captivity, but I think zoos are important to preserve species. Chester Zoo is really good. Yeah, so Revo's been to Chester Zoo at least. Yeah. Four times, I think. I used to go to. We got uh, married and uh, take the kids regularly. I used to go to London Zoo. Yeah, and um, I mean our kids are all over twenty now, so um, we've well, both been been with them, even when they're in adulthood, they enjoy well, going. I, think, I, think but I never go. See these animals. I never go. Great. Oh, you you're against it that much? Oh, I I like to see the animals. I don't like to see them suffer. I like them to be kept properly. Um, now, where was it? There's a zoo I used to go to where. Oh, I, I was going to tell you this, but I can't remember which zoo it was. There was a zoo I used to go to where they had an award-winning um, penguin. Um, in, in, what do they? Call? I was about to say the word. What do you call it? Enclosure. Yeah. Um, which had this sort of long concrete slide, over. but it was too dangerous, so it was banned. They kept it because it was it was award-winning, and then the penguins had a new enclosure and they lived somewhere else. Uh, and I think that you can. You see, it's not that. I don't believe that animals know they're in captivity. As long no, as you, uh, no, as right. long as you put it, as you as you make it such that they, you, you observe what is it about being in the wild that um, it depends affects let, their let, behavior. All right, let, yeah, right. So yeah. This and is, then you make allowances. Okay, here's an example of what you're saying. Yes. So if a dog is born with one eye, yes, uh, do you put it down? Well, no, because the dog only ever knows it's got one eye. Yes. So you know it will function absolutely fine if it's got three legs. Yes. It yeah. will function fine. Yes. But the difference about taking an animal out of the wild, yeah, say, um, uh, let's talk of like chimpanzees or gorillas or something like that, and then put them into a cage situation, you know, that's terrible. That well, is terrible. Well, so, if, you put the, if you think of a cage as a little place, but if, uh, now Kate says wildlife park, a wildlife park is a type of zoo, isn't it? Where, 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 or a safari park where they're allowed more freedom. I mean, their enclosures are massive. And they wouldn't know for a lot of animals that if you do if you create the enclosure correctly, they've got more area than they would normally use in the wild. I mean, they don't roam everywhere. They they most animals stay within a certain area, and so you know that 
the experts on this, well, right, they well, would say most, they most could animals, do it. Maybe, maybe most animals right. have got three reasons why they move and migrate. One is food. Yeah. Secondly, it's mating. Yes. And the other thing is shelter. Yeah. So, you know, to say they all stay in the same place, well, that certain breeds of animals may do. Yeah, 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 but so certain other things don't. I mean, elephants, for a fact, travel hundreds and hundreds of miles yeah, across yeah. the Serengeti. Yes. So keeping elephants in an enclosure, whether it's five square miles... Isn't natural for an elephant. No, it's not natural, but you can make it such that it's natural. You see, they go to get food where you give them food. It's um, like looking at it's like looking at um, orcas, or, um, what they call killer whales. Yes. You see them in captivity. Yes. All right. You say, yeah, I'll get it all right. So I just go and mute my phone. You're not allowed. I mean, uh, people can't keep um, them in captivity. They, they just can't do it. No. And the thing is, is you look at their dorsal fin, and it's bent over like that. Yeah. Because it's it's in captivity. Yes. Well, yes. So I would say it's different for different all, animals. All I'm saying is that I absolutely yeah. endorse yes. um, the conservation type of animal uh, work, marine yes. biology, all of oceanic stuff. Absolutely. What I'm not really thrilled about is animals being, but, in uh, some uh, sense, yeah. paraded. And even looking at the orangutan place in Chester. Oh, I'm not really quite happy about that. It doesn't resonate. You're looking through an inch of glass at an orangutan that's sat there looking at you. And you kind of think, that is just... Yeah. It's, well, I just don't think I'll tell you a right. story about orangutans in a minute, but for, I just noticed Major made a comment. And that's, this is a good point, but um, you need to start off by getting them out of the wild. But once you've got that, you, uh, once you've got a breeding pair, you can populate all the zoos with it. You don't actually... Uh, need to take more out of the wild in order to populate the zoos. You have, you end up having animals that are born in captivity, and that's what they know, and they grow up with that. You don't need to keep. You don't need to depopulate the wild to populate your zoo. Well, no, it's you not about depopulating, is it? You know, yeah. I, I I appreciate that they that you know one of the they, things that they've struggled with the most to actually be able to breed in captivity is pandas. Yeah, true, yes, which yes. are an incredibly dumb bear. Yeah, I mean, of all the bears, the panda's the dumbest. Yeah, it's got the worst sex thing in the planet, and it has to eat eighteen thousand billion ton of bamboo yes, to try and survive. At least that, yeah, yes. at least at the very least. Poor old panda. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, lovely creatures as they are. Yes, uh, but not the brightest. No, and, uh, well, uh, yeah, some problems. But, but it's interesting. So if you um, uh, uh, I'll save the orangutan. No, the orangutan. Sorry, there was a, a, an interesting orangutan uh, who um, who used to keep escaping. Um, there's a story in orangutan who used to keep escaping, and he would keep on doing it until, uh, and uh, until one day. This is a true story, but I don't have the details because I haven't looked it up. But uh, he was found watching, looking in to the his own cage next to the next to visitors to the zoo. So that again, he escaped from his cage, came round and wandered amongst the public until people noticed they were looking into the cage. Where is the Ah! And he was right next to them, looking into his own cage. Hilarious. He kept doing it. They did eventually manage to uh, keep him in. But I believe I'm right in saying they managed to keep him in because what he was trying to do was get into another cage where a female Elite was. I believe I'm right in saying that. Um, and he was very angry because there was another male in there. Um, but but anyway, okay. be that as it may, he escaped. And it was looking at hilarious. Okay, Chester Zoo have managed to breed a small herd of elephants. What's what if they're so small they, elephants? They've, they're not really they're they've, not really elephants, are they? They've really improved the enclosure, and the elephants are breeding well. Yeah. What else can they do? They might as well uh, just yeah. They're breeding good elements, though. So I think elements, yeah, elephants, and elements as well. Yeah. Well, all right, okay. Well, we can draw a line under that. Uh, don't get me wrong, I have been to Chester Zoo, yeah. and don't get me wrong, I've taken pictures I, of, I, the, yeah, of yeah. the flamingos and the like, yeah. and that sort of stuff. Great for photography. I think it's just great for ed but, education. I love the zoos, as yeah. long as they're but, properly run. Um, it's not something I strive to go and do, and it's something I have some underlying Anxiousness. moralistic problem with. Oh. Yeah, You have angst. Maybe. I have angst. If you're anxious, oh, you've got to have a bit of angst. Yeah, See, I'd rather go, to be honest, I'd rather go to a farm. Yeah, well, a farm... I would rather go to a farm well, and go and look at the sheep. But why is it... The, why, the cows, is it why is it okay to keep pigs. sheep in captivity, then? Uh, well, because they're bred for a reason. Yeah, but they'd prefer to just be wandering around, wouldn't they? Freedom. 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 No. No, no. See, see, farming's more slightly more complex than that. 
No, but if yeah. you, yeah, uh, but you know, I the, the original. Cost, I think the cost of sh going out, you know, rather than, right, we're going out on a pheasant shoot today. Yeah, yeah, we're going out on a sheep shoot today. The sheep are quite dumb anyway, but they're 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 they're. Kind well, of, I'm game if you are. Yeah. <laughs> they're kind of in a domesticated or farm a domesticated sense for obviously to end up on your plate. Yeah, delicious. Delicious. Well, they're not. Of course, they're not killed as sheep. They're they're ah. as little baby lambs. Well, that's a different Cute thing as well. Little baby lambs prancing so, about. Yeah, you're for the dinner. Plate. And I okay. So now now we're moving on to a different subject here. I would much rather buy mutton than buy lamb. Yeah. Because I think it, a, it's a nicer flavour. The only big oh. difference is it takes a longer time. You have to, to cook, cook it longer. Yeah, yeah. it is a nice flavour, but you have to cook yeah. it longer. Yeah. Yeah. So mutton, I think, is very very nice. Because I think actually the poor little baby lambs. Ah, yeah, that was a really bad bar, wasn't it? Um, that was more of a squeak. <laughs> that was a good bar, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I d you've got to be more fearful, haven't you? Before. <laughs> no, I don't know. I still got it wrong. But, uh, I'm not in bar. So what? Uh, what are the? Uh, but again, the I, the chat, any any vegetarians watching? Um, not anymore. Any vegans? They all run off. <laughs> vegans, because yeah. uh, actually, I mean, all lambs and sheep are vegetarians, aren't they? So, so that's fine. Yeah, shall we move on? Well, yeah, well, we can do, yeah. So, anyway, yeah, sum up. Um, I'll be to the zoo, uh, but yeah, it's not my bag, really. Yeah, right. Uh, so you were looking at the Durrell family or Gerald, well, Gerald, Gerald Durrell, yeah, he, no, he's an his interesting name's character. actually Gerald Malcolm Durrell, OBE, 7th of January 1925 to the 30th of January 1995, was a British naturist, correct, writer, <laughs> zookeeper, conservationist, and television presenter. Yeah. So, should we have a look at an image? Yeah, here's Gerald Dole. I, I bet Kate's actually read all his books. Um, I, I've read a few of them. That's the jab. Yeah, he got a bit uh, a bit portly in his old years. If you look at the actually, picture... Actually, that the... image is the one I think I recognise yeah. him from. He had TV shows. If you look uh, at him in the he's middle got, there. He's got a bit portly. Well, look at him in the black and white picture. That's him as well. There. Yeah, yeah he's about 18 there. And he's about he's 18. Not. He's in his 30s. Uh, he, he, it was when he stopped... Gallivanting around the world all the time that he put on a bit away. I think uh, he, he wrote, wrote some great plot. He wrote some brilliant short stories as well. Yes, I like his great, great writer. Yeah. Kate thinks we've lost the plot. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Oh, we. I I put it down somewhere and I just turned away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but yes, he. Um. Yeah, it's great stories by Gerald Dole about. His, particularly, I like his wandering around the world. But his first, uh, his book about his early life, My Family and Other Animals, which has been, you know made into a drama and that sort of thing, uh, is fascinating. He started very young, uh, liking animals. Uh, they lived, his family lived on Corfu, I think. Um, is that him as a child there? I think it is, with an owl. Corfu. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. He, uh, his older brother um, is also an author. I'm just trying to remember his name. Lawrence Durrell, is it? Um, anyway, I can't remember his name, but his older brother's also an author. Uh, yeah, so Gerald Dole created... Is that where he ended up on Jersey? Yeah, he, he, yeah, he founded a, Jersey this Zoo. This rings a bell, yeah. This rings a bell. And uh, it, with a specific purpose, because he had been going around collecting these animals, and he thought, well, no, what we should be doing is just breeding the animals in the zoo. And uh, he turned to doing that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, great story. But uh, he's a fascinating character. And zoos, yeah. Uh, the other thing about zoos is they um, the first ever YouTube video was, of course, filmed in a zoo. Was it? Yes, it's one of the founders of YouTube, and he's saying about elephants. Ah. And he says, the interesting thing about elephants is they've got big trunks. Trunks. And he, I, it was only very recently that I realised he was making a rude joke. Yeah. Because YouTube was set up, I didn't know this until recently either, as a dating um, site to put up your videos to attract your mate. Um, so was he trying to he was sort making, of be suggestive about his he was, own he was trunk? trying to be suggestive, yeah. yes. Um, but it is, you know, it's had millions of views, of course, because it was the first ever, uh, it was the first ever YouTube video. So at that point, even if it had one view, it was the most popular video on YouTube. Well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes, yeah, so I can't remember his name, but if you go to YouTube, you can find it quite easily just by typing first video on YouTube. Shall I? Um, yeah. Shall I do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah do right. that. Or, or um, Me at the Zoo, I think it's called. 
is the name of the video. And we'll see it in action. You'll see whether I'm right about it. I thought he, he was, he's, to me, slightly foreign sounding, not American, not British. And I thought he didn't know the word. It's 19 seconds. Should we go? Yeah, yeah, play it, yeah. Yes. So he, uh, they just put this up as a test. And then tried to get people to send in their dating videos. Couldn't get anyone to do it. But the then noticed... First video ever uploaded on YouTube. They noticed people putting up cat videos instead. And the rest is history. Let's see. Yeah. If you can get the sound, that'd be good. See if we can do it. The yeah. first. No, ever I, I can do YouTube. it. I don't want to do it through the flipping telegraph. Yeah. I want to see it through YouTube. Right. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Look it up on YouTube. All right. This is go 50... directly to YouTube. All right. This is fifty-three seconds. I think someone's introducing it. So. Right. Let's go. Happy anniversary. Fifty-three seconds isn't too bad. Yeah. Let's full screen that. Yeah. Hang on. Right. So. Uh, hang, on, hang on. Hang on. I don't know what whether well, what I've, the first on, video on, in Twitch was. Just, right. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, NDI audio on. Switch this across, fade. Uh, Ready? Oh, that's some bloke introducing it, yeah. I'll say. Well, before the word YouTuber became a career, there was this original video posted 15 years ago today. All right, so here we are in front of the uh, elephants. Um, cool thing. Joet Kareem, co founder of YouTube, really? stars in this 18 second video. It's called Me at the Zoo. You can call it the first viral video now with more yeah. than 90 million views. Take that YouTube out has come a long way. Down. People around the world watch more than a billion hours of content every day. Was that it then? Uh, well, you didn't see it um, because he, he cut he, in before he, he said he, it. He, he was about to say the immortal line they've got that is, the, is uh, about massive their trunks. trunks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, if you went into YouTube, and if people might be not be interested, what was it the first YouTube video? So if if you, I think it's as I say, I think it's called Me at the Zoo, which you could type in. There it is, Me at the Zoo. Yeah. Eighteen seconds. Yeah, there you go. A. Bingo. Go go ahead. Yeah. Full screen. All right, so here we are, one of the uh, elephants. Um, cool thing about these guys is, been, is that they have really, really, really long um, trunks, and that's that's cool. And that's pretty much all there is to say. There you are, and then the legend was born. YouTube yeah. had begun. How lame. Yeah, there we are. So, so that, you know, so there's hope for us then with the quality of our content. Mm. That was that bad. I wonder how many views that's had on it now. Well, um, I think you're uh, the, the, correct. Our, as is so bad, it goes out the other side and becomes good. It's one so, of those things, yeah, you know. I think you're right. This is me at the zoo. It's a bit like you're so ugly, you're most beautiful. It's that sort of thing. Yeah. So me at the zoo. Yeah, has been. What's the second YouTube video? Yeah. Oh. No one remembers that. Yeah, I bet he's no like, what's, the, what's the fourth one? Yeah. So at me at the zoo, four K upscaled, sixty frames per second, has had one million three hundred and seventy six thousand two hundred and sixty five views. Yes. See the original here. Oh, that wasn't the original. Ah no, so all right, the original has had a hundred and sixty seven million views. Yes. Eighteen seconds. Because it's it, now that's an interesting thing in itself, isn't it? Because it it's just of historical interest. Like you'd go and see you know, you go and see a magnificent cathedral, but you'd also go and see a simple house, if it's the oldest. Just down by St Luke's <gasps> Church, there's the oldest house in Wallasey. And it's just a very simple house. But it's interesting because it's old. What's this? The 20 oldest. Oh, right. Me at the Zoo, the first ever YouTube video. Yeah. Wasn't. Oh, the wasn't. First. Oh, that's the claim, is it? What do they claim it was the first one? I think this is some sort of scam. Well, I've looked up it. second YouTube video. A shocking second. I don't know. I really hate looking at stuff on here in case it's dodgy. You never right. know. They might put something down. Yeah. All yeah. right. So yeah. We'll there may have been a, we'll a communication. Right. Test, I'm gonna. I'm right. gonna. I'm gonna make an executive decision. And say, right. I'm gonna move on. We've done. Yeah, look, we've so, got, right. look. We've got some great uh, yeah. conversation so, starters. I'm gonna. Hang, yeah, on, yeah, hang go on. Hang on. Hang on. There's something yeah. I wanna do. Right. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. This is something just, about yeah. how to be happy. Yeah. I think this is a great topic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because everyone's so bloody pissed off at the minute and not happy. Yeah, that we really need to know about how to be happy. Yes, right. You ready this to is an article think? about. Yes, it's an article about it. So this this is actually a serious one. We're not going to make. We're not making fun of this. This is even though uh, it's got an interesting image there of someone. Is that person happy or? She looks like she's upside down, and yeah. they've switched the image upside down. Or maybe it is you know above one of those grills like in that. Uh, like Marilyn Monroe in that famous shot um, with the air blowing up 
I know we know what you're on about, Pete. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so you, there's you worry me. There's, right, an really? article, there's an article underneath here. Uh, according to research just released by neuroscientists at University College London, avoiding high expectations is the key to happiness. Absolutely. They used a gaming app and MRI scans of people's brains to come to this conclusion. More than 18,000 people played a game on the app that involved making risky decisions. The researchers found that participants' happiness depended not on how they were doing against other participants, but on whether they were doing better than they had expected. Yeah, Ooh. and uh, so something I I recognise in that. I think that's true. In, in, uh, anyway, this um, this makes perfect sense because one of uh, this is someone writing now. I think I oh, I haven't got the oh. I, I'm not allowed to read this because it's on the Times. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I tell you what, we'll come back to you, and you can read the rest from your phone. Yeah. Hopefully, oh, I've got it. Let me just call it up. Well, I'll just have the picture of the happy face. You keep that up there, and yeah. I'll see if I can and read it. And then I'll lean phone. back, put my feet up, show yeah. the dog. And See if I've talk. got it. Hopefully, I've got it on here. If I tell you what, you carry on. I'm going to go for a quick bathroom break. Yeah. All right, and you can find it yeah. and talk it through. Yeah. No. I. Well, yes. Um. I don't think. Yeah. You need to lower your expectations. Um. On whether you're going to enjoy a bathroom break, but according um, according to um, according to researchers, you need to lower your expectations. And the reason reason is because if you you see their research amongst those people. Um, 18,000 people were tried. It was if they were doing better than they had expected that, uh, that, they, um, that they found that they were happy. It wasn't that they, whether they were competing with other, whether that in competing with other people, they were doing better than that, better than them. It was more that they were, um, uh, more that they were, be, we're doing better than they expected. Now, I, I'm just trying to log in on my phone as we're talking, but the key to the research is this. If um, if if someone has a particular expectation they're going to do, maybe they're going to be a high flyer, uh, if they do achieve better than they thought, then they are happy. Now, let's uh, just put that into normal life, uh, to real life. If, you, um, if you're, I don't know, um, if you're talking about uh, the job you've got to work. If you believe you're going to be have the unrealistic expectations of when you were a, a child, say I'm going to be an astronaut, whatever it is you think you're going to do, and you don't lower your expectations, then you're going to be disappointed. If uh, you think you're always told that you have a wonderful singing voice when you're just embarrassing and you go on X Factor, then because you were expected to win the show and actually you get kicked out in the first audition, uh, that means that you're going to be disappointed, you're going to be unhappy, and you're going to find it throughout your life. Uh, so, um, I just, uh, I failed to get into the, the Times, so um, I, it's obviously not signed in my phone, but find it elsewhere. So if you bring, up, bring that back up, uh, I didn't find the rest of the article, but I can, uh, right, I think if we could just, we just talk about it, the main concept, Shall I uh, which back I just in? talked through. I had a little bit more on my phone than was there, but oh, okay. I was signed in, but uh, I have to go into my account and allow payment. Oh, right, no worries. Okay. So, sorry, guys, I wasn't prepared to well, pay just I think, to read out I the article. I think I've got a view on this, if I you may. Think you could, yeah, and uh, yeah, while you're doing that, expert. Uh, and you got uh, put comments in the chat. Kate's already got a comment there, but yes, go ahead. I have no yeah. expectations, so I'm always happy. <laughs> yes, yeah. I I'm think, not sure it was quite like that. Yeah, I think the point is, um, do you know what? It is a bit of personal life. All yes, right, go ahead. This is. I'm keeping trying to sign in. Yeah, you, you carry on. So yeah. this is quite interesting, right? So when I was going through, uh, what I'd say was a rather pressing time in my life, I went and spoke to a psychologist psychologist mm -hmm. uh, to talk about things to try and get through the bottom of it and what he prescribed to me was to set no goals right that was his mo right we're going to remove all goals uh which is quite interesting because i think that the notion of that is if you don't set any expectations uh slightly uh, along the lines of what kate's saying there then how can you fail how can you fail a goal you've never set so, and if you set low expectations, yeah, that are so achievable, then you're achieving your expectations. But I feel you'll get dissatisfied with that after a while. Mm -hmm. That's kind of my view. 
but yeah, that was interesting to go see a psychologist and say, mm, I'm not happy. Uh, oh right, well why is that? Well, mm. you know, I feel like I'm not I'm not doing well. But, I'm not doing things as much as I should be. Well, perhaps you should stop setting goals then. I, oh, all right, okay. Well, that doesn't that doesn't make me strive to exist, does it? But yeah, okay, yeah, I get you. The the problem I agree with this article. So I just found that I could. Maybe I didn't pay my subscription. Maybe I found out that I haven't kept up to date. I think that's probably it. Really? But the uh, yeah, but you're unreliable. You didn't pay for your Times subscription. Yes, yeah. Okay. I maybe I thought that it wasn't worth it. Sorry, Times. But uh, if, I know if there's any executives watching. But um, but yeah, the, the the main premise of the article we saw, and the thing is, I I agree, and I could see that, that there's that research they did. But I agree that if you want to be happy you should have realistic expectations. But is my I've heard the question this is really a, a put as a question. Is the purpose of life to be happy? I mean yes, you wouldn't achieve anything. I mean if you you have no expectations, yeah, you might you, you, very or at least low expectations, uh, you're more likely to be happy because you're more likely to achieve them. Uh, but uh, is that the point of or, or life, or do you want to try and achieve stuff? So you're going to fail, but at least you will have achieved something. Depends what, you, depends well, what it means for happiness. I think, I think the point is, is, um, is, the way I look at it, is it's all part of... Um, it's all part of this sense of you and where you are in the world, isn't it? So if, if for example, you don't push yourself, I think you can become very, you can undervalue yourself. Mm. You know, you, you, you haven't, you haven't done anything worthwhile in your life. You've kind of trudged along. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. managed to survive. And to me, that sounds like a lost opportunity of what is, in my perception, one of the most amazing gifts you'll ever be given, ever. All right? To be given the gift of life... Oh, I thought you were going to say Lamborghini. Got it, yeah. Mm. Um, I think sometimes you need to look at it in that sense. Mm. Because yeah. Yeah, yeah. when... when if you, if you um, I'm trying to explain this. So if you just sort of look at your life as well, I'm just here and I'm alive. I never asked for this. Well, yeah. okay. <laughs> That's one way of looking at it. Or you could look at it as a gift and think, actually... Uh, All of the things that what, I've been... Yeah. What's the matter? No, I was just thinking, there was... So, I, it reminded me, I think there was a court case someone attempted to sue their parents for being born. Um, I think that was... What, anyway, go America, on. perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, get, get over yourself, all right? You are alive, and that is a blessing. Uh, a blessing in a spiritual or secular way, whatever, you're alive and you're given opportunity. And yeah. anything given opportunity is amazing. So, I just sort of think... Um, if you're given that opportunity, you should do something with it. Yeah. I don't know how difficult it is to become a journalist on the Times, but I imagine you're quite a high flyer if you get in that position. Um, so you can imagine such a person seeing this article and writing about it and saying, look, uh, I, you know, I, I've always tried to strive to be my best. I, you know, I work through the night to get my, to get my research done for my articles and get it perfect. And I, uh, I, do you know I need to just lower my expectations to be happier? Whereas for me, I have the opposite problem. That's what I'm trying to say is that, yeah, I, I'm generally quite happy puddling along through life and just, uh, you, you, you know, thinking, well, everything's fine. I don't, don't need to do more. I don't need more money. I've got enough. You know, I, I'm very happy with the house. So it's, oh God, it's big enough. It's got nothing. In. The car is fine. You know, uh, my wife and children, they're, you know, they're all right. You know, so I'm, I've, I've got... You know the job's fine. It, it pays my pays my wages and this sort of. And um, I try and so I, I have to try and counter that by getting myself to be more ambitious. To I try and have to try and be dissatisfied. I find it the other way. It well, depends on your personality. I think, I think the thing is is that uh, don't get me wrong. I mean the fact that you have um, what I would say was a successful life and the fact that you can yeah you can count yourself lucky for that. Um, if you want I think to, it was a well, lot of it was luck, yeah. Pardon? I think I think it's I'm lucky that yes, I mean. Well, lucky or blessed, whatever you. Yeah, want lucky to, that I'm blessed. That's right, what, what I'm trying to say. Whatever you want to yeah, say yeah, is yeah. that um, the cards you've been dealt, mm. all right, and the situations you've put yourself in, um, and if you put a spiritual sense on it, and how the Lord's worked in your life as well, you are you are a vicar, so you know that's bound to come into it. Is that 
that they're the, they're the cards you've been dealt. Yes. And sometimes you get dealt an easy hand. I yeah. think it's it's not just about oh you know my, my kid seems to be doing all right. I'm sure that you're striving to try and make sure that you get the best for your kids. And I don't mean that you you spoil them or something. You try and endeavour to get the best for your kids. Yes. You, you endeavour to give the best to your wife. And you you True. endeavour to you know do the best at your work. And the thing about your best is there's no there's no limit to your best. No. Your best is always agree, like yes. you kind of think that. You'd be surprised at what you're able to achieve, for example. So you might say that I can go from here to here, but actually you can achieve this much. And when you do it, there's a risk. There is yes. a risk to take. Yes. And actually you prove to yourself what you're capable of. Yeah. And that is incredibly rewarding. Mm. Yeah? Yes. Now that's not to say, I mean, as I think, uh, yeah, Majur said about having realistic expectations. So it's not like saying, well, you know, I'm going to try and beat the four-minute mile, having never run at all in my life, um, is probably quite a difficult goal. But if you go and run the mile and you do the first time in 15 minutes, for example, not that I know how long it takes to run a mile, and you say, well, next time I'm going to try and do it in 14 and a half. Mm. Yeah, that's realistic. Yes. And then if you do that, you come well, when you start getting fit, then yeah. you can go, go further down. But I think that you should always... In fact, if I sat there... In fact, I can give you an example. I'll give you an example. Um... Back in the day when I used to be uh, in IT and I used to contract for myself, mm. I had a contract uh, for a company and it was one of those contracts where I basically sat on my behind and did nothing for 18 months. Mm. And um, it was a fairly significant part of my life yeah. doing that. And yeah. Um, yeah, it really got to me. It got to me a massive amount in the sense that um, I didn't feel useful mm. Uh, I felt that I was uh, not achieving anything. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it was, it was, yeah, it was, I'd say it was the start of a depressive stage in my life because I wasn't do. I wasn't of any value. Yes. I didn't feel valuable. Mm. I didn't feel any, yes. of any, any value it, to the, the, the project that yes. I was part of. Yeah. Here's what I think about happiness. I think happiness, true happiness, is always a byproduct. You know, it, I yeah. think if you try and achieve happiness, I'm going to do all this and make myself happy. Uh, you see, time and time again, people are unhappy. That's not how um, it works. Whereas yeah. if they, well, I'm going to try and help people, I'm going to try and achieve this, and along the way they find by accident that they're happy. And, and in, fact, in fact, I think that the thing is, it's not that this is wrong either. What we're saying is, uh, which you were saying as well, Al, you were saying, look, uh, your short-term goals have to be realistic and achievable, yeah. but you can have a really massive long-term goal and you'll get there in the end or if you might not quite get there but you have made all these other achievements so you'll still feel satisfied yeah, yeah. and the, there's that saying isn't that i forget who said it you know we're all of us in the gutter but some of us are looking at the stars do you know the, the famous i've expression? never heard that but no that sounds quite good uh, so in I other think, words you're, you're looking up rather than looking down well, at the gutter i use yeah. this phrase a lot it's about where you where you set the bar yeah that's what i do is that where do you set the bar if you set the bar really low, you're only ever going to achieve low. Yeah. Exactly. If you set the bar really high and you don't reach the bar, mm. look at everything you've managed to do between low and where your high yes. bar is. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. If you've said, right, well, we, we call it a day here because mm. it's not achievable or something. Yes. Victor Frankl. Oh, yeah. The Victor Frankl's an interesting uh, chap, isn't he? He was in the... Um uh, he was in a prisoner of war camp in the in the Second World War uh, concentration camp, a Jewish guy, and he did experiments. He, I, I, I think I've got the right guy. Um, I'm looking him up. Um, isn't Viktor Frankl the one? Did he actually do the experiments on rats, or was he was he Victor just quoting Frankl, it? Viktor Frankl, an Austrian neurologist. Uh, put put Viktor Frankl rat experiments. See, if, I, I think he may have done this one to do with this topic. Um, happiness cannot be pursued. It ensues. Yeah. Uh, it ensues, yes. It comes from what you're trying to do almost by accident. I think that gets across the point a lot more succinctly than I was saying it. Did he do a rat experiment or am I misremembering? I I'm just... still looking. I'm just I'm looking at, um, you know, when you see the, the, um, the comments come back yeah. as a res uh, result of the search, you have the title and then part of the um, titles and yes. the subtitles and that. Uh, Frankl's first book in English, Man's search for meaning was dot, 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 a feeling that we are trapped in a complete yes. rat race that yes. drains our energies. 
but I'm not sure that that uh, is I, I, the same thing. I'll tell you, the, the, the experiment I'm talking about, which um, actually I don't know if he did it now. I, I, well, give me the experiment. I'll run that up. And well, see if there's I a rat happen. experiment where rats are thrown into a vat of water and allowed to drown. Um, but s some of the rats are given in their vat of water have a light above it. And if they've got a light, they can see that there's a way out. And so they try for a lot, lot longer. Uh, that is, of course, a very cruel experiment, bearing on our, our comments earlier about animal cruelty. But, uh, you know, that was the experiment. In other words, if you can see that there's a possibility of winning in the future, you have hope. Even rats can have hope. And he okay, was. I've got it. So, drowning rat psychology experiment, resilience and the power of. Uh, this is called uh, World of Work Project, Power of Hope. Yes. So, a psychological experiment, drowning rats, yes. a series of experiments that are fairly cruel and unpalatable, yet interesting in their findings. Mm -hmm. Kurt Richer uh, demonstrated that hope is a powerful factor. In I wasn't Frank. Perhaps he yeah. quoted it okay, or something. Well, that's like that. something. Okay, we'll leave that. We'll let that. If well, wants Victor Frank is very interesting about hope because he's talking to, in looking back at his time um, during hope, the war. Hope, hope was the other guy. Yeah, no, but he's talk. He was. He did talk about it in that he talked about the fact that um, prisoner of war. Some people in prisoner. Let's who were in a up. prisoner of war. Let's find him. I'll find it. Okay. Some people who were prisoners of well, Jackie, war. Well, if they could, sorry, if they, if they could envisage what they were going to do later, there was something they wanted yeah. to do. I'm just saying, I'm going to stick yeah. the yeah. wiki up so you can go yeah. through it with everyone. Yeah, yeah, because it, it's um, 19, 1965, that's the year I was born. Um, the autobiography. Well, Man's yeah. Search for Meaning, meaning. I guess that's the one because of it, it, he talks about his experiences in Nazi concentration camp. I didn't remember the name of the book. But I remember reading this, that he said that during his time there, there were some people who just, uh, you know, gave up. They died, uh, yet some people uh, uh, could endure the most horrific circumstances. And the reason was that they had hope, and hope is very important. Well, we, we, uh, I guess he may not have used that term. I, I, in my mind, he did. Yes, if you if you look there, Man's Search for Meaning, that's the one. Um, let's see, what does he say? Oh, he just says about how good it is. Um so the book originally titled The Psychologist's Experience yeah, in a concentration camp. That was released in Germany in Germany in 1946. Here, here we look at the bot uh, under logotherapy and existential analysis. Uh, it says, the final sentence there says, uh, his acknowledgement of meaning as a central motivational force and factor in mental health is his lasting contribution. And I think that's really what I was trying to say, in that if you have a meaning to your life, you, there is something that you want to achieve, something outside yourself that you're that you're looking towards as a measure of what you've done, rather than just oh yeah I'm you know what, setting low <clears throat> standards. If you've got some something like that, it 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 results <clears throat> accidentally is in um, as a byproduct in happiness, and if you don't have that, uh, then it's difficult to be happy because things that uh, are. Things that are just entertainment, I suppose, can't produce happiness overall. They're just a diversion, uh, like you know, going to the movies or whatever, it, um, yeah, sipping it, whiskey, it's, whatever it's, it might it's be. It's not an accomplishment, and it's short-lived. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, they are bad I, things necessarily, bad things in themselves, but they can't produce. There is real a happiness. film, right? There's a film on Netflix called Happy, and oh, I watched really? it a few years back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, if anyone wants to go and watch it, go and watch it. Um, not yet. Uh, not yet, yeah, well, whenever, you know, as long as it's if, after the show. Um, but go and watch it. It was quite interesting. It talks about what makes people happy. And the interesting, I don't have. Uh, what do you have? <sighs> what, you don't have happiness? Or you no, don't? she hasn't got Netflix. Oh, I see. Okay. I don't have a Netflix either. But don't you? No. Okay. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> yes. But... <laughs> But, right, uh, anyway, so that's a useful thing. That could make um, What was I going to say? What was I going to say? Um, anyone seen the film The Matrix? I've seen the film The Matrix. I don't know if other people yeah, have. Yeah, so I think it's in the second one, um, Matrix Reloaded, where the architect says to Neo that they built The Matrix and it was perfect. Mm. But man couldn't exist in perfection. Yes. It needed to exist in sufferance, pain, and I think as... Um, as Jules said about Victor Frank was saying happiness cannot be pursued. I thought it was the it first one. Ensures. Mm. In, in shoes, sorry. You think it's the it other way around? Ensues, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, it comes out. It comes. You can't find happiness. It comes out of something else. Is what it's saying. And uh, yeah, I just thought. I thought I remember that dialogue. Yeah, you can't first pursue one. happiness. Yeah, it will happen. Um, I, I, I'm not quite sure of terms there, but I, I agree. It's something that you. It's something that comes out of, and I don't know. I, I suppose that film happy if people can't watch it. The fundamental thing that came out of that, to be honest, you can watch it anyway. It's, I suppose it's a spoiler alert. But the thing that makes most people happy is serving other people. Yeah, if you that got, is yeah. what makes people happy is the happiness of others. Is, I mean, it, it, I, I think that's generally true. I mean, but people have different purposes, don't they? They have a big purpose in their life. Um, I think as long as it's something that. What do you mean? I mean, I'm, well, I'm, I'm, may ta not... I'm talking from a generalized perspective. Yeah, yeah, there. The generalized. I, I agree. One of the I'm agreeing. That with makes you. people yeah. happy. Yeah. It's not the pursuit of money. Shiny things, um, fast women and hot cars, so, something, something like, like that. that yes, uh, that's know, the way I like. Yeah, it. absolutely. Um, it doesn't give you happiness. Happiness comes no. From, happiness comes from what well, true happiness comes from. I think simplicity. Uh, and I have to admit that, um, as a young man, I pursued. Uh, was saying don't have. Don't have low expectations. Just happy that my life as my life has changed drastically since two thousand eighteen. Oh. Okay. Well, all right, I'll come back to that in a sec. Um, that needs a bit of explanation. Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you're willing to give it. If you want to share that, I'd like to know. Yeah. That's entirely up to you, Kate. Absolutely. Just yeah. Yeah. But if not, yeah. that's great that you've had uh, some life event, which since two thousand and eighteen has proved to be very very positive in your world and that's fantastic news and i'm really yeah. pleased to hear it um what i'm saying is that when i was younger my pursuit of happiness um do i still have yeah. do i still have traits of this in my life yeah of course i do i i, I absolutely do sometimes i need the shiny the, the shiny as i call it is something that i for a, for a, a small fixed period of time makes me feel better about the world i live in that's the shiny but actually um my pursuit of money has changed over the years. Mm -hmm. You know, I never... Early on, I wanted to earn loads and loads and loads and loads of money. And now I don't. I don't, I don't pursue money. Uh, I pursue a, a level of contentment, which can reduce stress, strain, and suffering, I suppose. Um, but I, I would say that my expectations aren't as high as they were. But... I have a different set of expectations now in what I perceive my ministry. So my ministry and my serving, if you will, almost creates difficult expectations for me to meet. Yeah. Because, um, because of who it's for. So like all of this streaming stuff that we do, um, there is an underlying reason for it. It's not for my popularity, uh, yeah, and it's not, them. and it's not for um. It's not for financial reasons. I, I don't want to be made a millionaire from being a streamer or something. That's not my intent either. Uh, I'd love to make a lot of money doing it, but be, be able to use it for positive cause. But that's not been something that's been mm -hmm. um, you know, a remarkable part of my life yeah. at all. So it, it's complex because um, if, if I could... If I could successfully do something on the level I'm thinking of, I'd be very happy that would have worked out. But Ah, interesting, the word Kate's saying there. Due to a long-term illness, I now am wheelchair-bound and unable to do the things I used to. But I'm still happy with my life. Yes. Yeah. So, I, I yes, I misread your earlier, earlier comments, Kate. You say, uh, let me just read it again. You say... We're saying don't have low uh, expectations, pause, just happy that I have life as my life has changed drastically since 2018. It, it, it's, it's two separate things. She was saying don't have low expectations, I'm just happy that I have life as my as life has, has changed yeah, yeah. drastically. So you, you have to, uh, uh, had to adjust your expectations because you're now in a different position, but still able to be happy. That's, uh, that's, that's fascinating insight there because... Uh, if you can adapt to different situations, uh, including ones which uh, curtail your freedom, like having to be in a wheelchair, and still be happy, I'd say I'd say that in itself is a great achievement. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, because right, that I, ability I, I, to... I can only echo that. That, that ability think, to be flexible. I think I'm just going to focus on that first thing where it's saying was, was saying don't have low expectations. I, I'm looking at that in, in, in a way that we often have uh, inflated or over-the-top expectations. Yeah. All right? So uh, exactly what we were looking at earlier about success. Yeah. All right? If our expectations are lower, not low, but lower... Yeah. And manageable, and actually, when you look at them from a different perspective, you can almost say they're an absolute blessing. Like I, the fact that I can breathe, <sighs> that is actually quite phenomenal. Yeah, but I take it for granted every two seconds. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And I don't think twice about it. And the fact that I can hold a conversation with my friend here. Here, here is is yeah absolutely it's great and I kind of don't think often about yeah, that what yeah, a blessing yeah. that is, yeah. so maybe it's a perspective thing yeah. with life is when you look at it through the right lens and appreciate what you do have, um, mm. do it you, does change it does change the dynamic got, of your your thankfulness. I've got a question for you though, mate. I think there's two things. Yeah, there's on. two things going on. Say if it's say for example you could say well. What are your expectations and what do you expect is going to happen? Right. If your expectation is, you know, I've got a big expectation, I'm wanting to um, achieve this great thing in my career, maybe I want to launch this company, it's going to be global. That's my long-term aim. But your expectations are that it's going to be really easy and that you'll, you'll get a big uh, flashy car as a salesman in the first year and that it won't affect your home life uh, because you'll have plenty of time to play with the kids as well. Then your expectations are too high for how easy it'll be and for how pleasant it'll be. All right. So, uh, so there's two separate things. One is your aim, and then there's your expectations about what it's going to be like to do it. Everything's difficult. So you can say, look, I want to have this big achievement, therefore I know it's going to be hard on the way. You lower your expectations of how easy it's going to be. Just a, a different perspective, I was thinking. But then, but then if okay, so if you rationalise... Your expectations, then, um... or, or 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 say I'm going to marry the perfect person, and then you don't expect to have to work at your marriage. So that's another example. That's yeah, I get I get what often, you're saying. Um, I get what you're saying. Often miss. Um, I don't know. I do wonder if some of that comes with maturity, though. Um, yeah, because does, as yeah. as as just experiencing life, you learn that things are never that easy. You know, and you, you, you know, when you smell a rat, you smell a rat, don't you? If it's, you know, nothing's that simple. I mean, sometimes, you know, you have a bit of luck money come in, whatever, uh, and that's great. And you're thankful for that as well. But actually, life tells you that it was never going to be that simple. And often when you embark on something, you know, unless you um, are naive, I suppose, uh, I don't understand quite what you're getting into. You've got, a, yeah. you know, the fact, yeah. even the fact that you're attempting it is great. Why not? You know, you're pushing yourself yeah. outside your comfort zone, <clears throat> which is great. Um, you know, you learn about it. And that's yeah. the other thing about setting goals that are slightly beyond yes. uh, what you think you can achieve. Because then, you know, you you learn through ex these experiences. And that's what's great. Uh, just to, I, know, I guess we're going to close out this subject. Now, but yeah. I would just uh, I was going to say, you know, I said earlier about, well, there are different things, things that produce happiness, different big aims that produce happiness, other than helping other people. Well, one thing would be, say, Gerald Dole. He decided to help animals. That was his... He uh, tried yeah. to keep species alive. Uh, you know, from a religious perspective, people try to please God. They love God, they want to please him. Mm -hmm. And it's him, it's their relationship with God that's important. And um, think of my background in science. For, for research scientists, the importance is the science, it's the knowledge. I want to gain this knowledge. Now, of course, all these things... Are good for other people it's good that there's a variety of animals and that they can see them in the zoo i think uh that you know the science offer knowledge in science can often be used for good but that's for the individual that's not the reason they're doing it you know they're doing it to gain the knowledge or to look after the animals or to serve god and it's the happiness for them is collateral but so is the good for humans i just don't you know for, it's different for different people what motivates them to want to achieve yeah, I, I think yeah, but the, the, I think the the key thing there is non selfish. It's it's yeah, not, it's not it's, selfish. It's, no, no, that's it's right. It's non self. Yeah, yeah. So I and, agree. and the byproduct is that 
you know, you are rewarded um, indirectly with happiness. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are times when you are completely not rewarded when you help other people out. Yes. Yeah? Um, that's um, a stubbing the toe type event. Uh, but I suppose that's about my faith in mankind, isn't it? It's that you help people out and sometimes they don't sometimes help you. Yeah. Not, not that you necessarily expect something back. Um, uh, yeah. But I just kind of... Um, I don't know. It depends on the kind of help you give. I think, you know, and it's not as simplistic as say, like, oh, look, I've got a spare tenor, I can give this to an Ethiopian fund or something like that. I mean, yeah. that doesn't give happiness, mm. I don't think. You, yeah. I think often that's one of those things that you kind of do because you think it's morally right. Yeah. Rather than actually, you know, if you got on a plane and you went to Ethiopia, not that I'm saying Ethiopia is a, it's just an example, but you went to Ethiopia and did something there to help Ethiopians, then that would be different. And I think the example I saw in the end of the film of Happy was actually in Calcutta, where Mother Teresa was. Yeah. There was a guy who was there helping people um, die, effectively, helping them during their passing, not helping them die, as in euthanasia. No. They, they, were, they were terminal, and he was there supporting them through yes. those, those yeah. things. Yeah. And I think that is incredibly rewarding because actually what you're doing yeah, is an amazing a, thing with people. just as an aside there was an interesting case um it was a video i saw on youtube there was this chap though who uh he would spend his he, he was a grandfather so he used to and he was used to handling babies and he would go into the hospital as uh, but you know sanctioned to do it yeah and uh did this all you know so there's nothing untoward about it he would go onto the ward and other people would be around so he would go and hold babies as they were dying so they knew you knew they were going to die that they, they, you know they were maybe only around for a day or a few days yeah, yeah, yeah. but he wanted their life to consist of being loved he wanted them to know feel that love during their short life so he goes and holds them and i assume that's because the babies couldn't be with their own mother or something like that yeah or, yeah know. something like that or yeah. uh or, or maybe the, mo the mother was yeah maybe the mother yeah, was for Ill, some reason, for yeah, the same reason. Yeah, yeah. so they'd be left alone so he made sure that... Uh, was that That's an interesting point. I mean, that gets onto a slightly different subject about um, abandonment with kids. Oh, yes. Uh, it's yeah. proved, isn't it, that if you don't hold and hug your child, that has massive, massive negative yeah. impact. Yeah. In fact, that can actually be a killer. Oh, yeah, that, yes. If, uh, if, if, that if, has been shown. Yeah, babies that aren't touched will yeah, die. Yeah. yeah, That's weird, isn't it? Yeah. So, and luckily, we... uh, rather by design maybe... Uh, mothers like holding their children, so it doesn't. Oh well, yeah, uh, I'm sure it. dads do as well. Uh, um, well I, it's not something I've had the pleasure of. Oh, um, yeah. but being a, a, a an uncle or a dog owner, you know, whatever. Dogs, yes, you can hold dogs. I love well. holding my dog. Um, he gives me a cuddle and kisses, so that's good. Right, should we move on to the next one? Can we have the quick fire round? Yeah, quick fire. Right. Yes, okay. We've okay. got we've got I think five or six six of these quick fire questions. So try doing them quickly, and if you're in the chat. I didn't need to say that quickly. For, I don't, <laughs> the questions are one after the other. I don't need to speak quickly. But if you in the chat want to join in, uh, you need to get in quick because uh, we're going to go through these unless we go off on a tangent. That could happen. So uh, the first of these is, uh, what's invisible but you wish people could see? <laughs> Something invisible in real life but you wish that people could see it. Uh, I've got a few ideas. Anyone, anyone in the chat got ideas? So something that's in real life is visible, but it'd be well, great, I, it'd be funny. Look, I mean, you've read this, so you've had a chance to think about it. So yes. You've got to give the I, rest I am, I mean, I'm giving them, yeah, yeah. I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm yeah, doing yeah. it. I'm just saying, I'll give us a few minutes to think about this through. So what's, what's invisible you yes. wish people could see? Yes. So that could be anything. Yeah, absolutely, yes. You let your imagination run right. It doesn't have to be something, it, it doesn't have to be ever practical that it could happen. Just that you wish people. Uh, I've got a. I've got a great idea. What well, I think is a great. I've idea. got an answer. Are oh, you got an answer? Yeah. Yeah. The truth. The truth. That's the. Uh, now, you would have thought that that you could do that. You uh, if I, I I don't know how you envisage it, but I envisage that the, the way the truth could be visible is it sort of lights up. Yeah. In a particular colour. An aura comes yeah. around 
whatever it be, human or yeah, yeah, whatever the truth, whatever is, you could just wh- tell. whatever the entity is that has the truth. A statement. The truth, the, the is truth visible. appears in a purple aura. Yes. What, like uh, what, do, what do you think, Charles? Anything? Um, I, I mean, there are uh, people's thoughts. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. I thought if 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 you were uh, people's thoughts appear maybe in words above their heads, you could tell. Exactly now the reason what why I wouldn't go down that route. Yes. Is because of what's the term? Safeguarding. No. GD, no, no GDPR. No. no, no, no. no um, <laughs> You got information about people you're not allowed to have. Oh, what's the term? Um, invasion of privacy. No, no, no. It's not about that. Oh. It's it's about how the mind works. Oh. So um, there is there's a term for you know when you have really bad thoughts. Yes. Uh, I mean, this is the great thing about us all. We can have really bad thoughts, but actually we don't act upon them. Yes. There's a. I think they're called um, intrusive. No. Um, um, there's a there's a term for them um, when you have these thoughts, because we're all monsters and we all have the ability to have these thoughts. Ha- yeah? Uh, what, what, yeah, I can't remember what the term is. If it comes to me, I'll let you know. Okay, but what about what it? What it means is fundamentally that you have these intrusive. I think it's intrusive thoughts. These are. I think yeah. that's the, the thing it's called. Right. Intrusive thoughts that you'd never act upon, and they can be quite savage and quite horrible and all of those things. And why would you want people to see the intrusive thoughts that just yes. spring into your mind, which aren't a representation of how you think? Yes. Well, fortunately, it's not going to happen. But I... I uh, something... uh, no, 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 hang on. <laughs> so I think we'll be they, fine. I'm just saying, that's why people's thoughts never came into my mind, because I wouldn't want to see yeah. the darkness. You don't want to see the darkness. I don't want to see around. the darkness of people's thoughts, because yeah. I don't think that's a fair but reflection I, I of them. Obviously, how about something physical? How about if you could see uh, the air around you? You could see it all the time. You can see through it, but you can see it. Maybe it was sort of a light beige colour, and you could see it. So you would know, and and it would get darker when it was a higher pressure. So all there's rain coming. Oh. Doesn't it get darker when it's higher pressure? Well, uh, probably you get. Cl- uh, no, the I clouds. don't think so. Uh, you no, might, you probably get clouds. It's darker it's, over <laughs> there. I think it's going to rain in. No, there. that's oh, true. It's yeah. raining. No, that is going to happen. Um, yeah. How about? Um, You'd look uh, like you're in a soup, though, wouldn't you? You think you're in like some sort of sand. De- um, uh, Storm. Storm, yes. yes. Okay, like yeah. let's move on. Next one well, is, what kind of secret society would you like to start? Yeah. Oh, intrusive thought. No, just yeah, get rid I've, of that I've, one. I've, um, <laughs> I've got a, yes, I've got a few ideas on this oh, one. Oh, yeah, go on then. Mm-hmm. Go on, I'd like to hear. Well, well, the thing is, I would like... Yeah, a, I'm hoping you give me an idea so I can come back with something good. But uh, go on. <laughs> I, I think you should have a secret uh, society of deniers. Uh, you know, there are people, who, you know, since the, the serious thing of Holocaust denier, right? Yeah. So someone who doesn't believe that the Holocaust happened um, when, you know, six million Jews were killed during the Second World War. And they say, well, it wasn't quite six million, which is true. Uh, the six million is just a big round figure. Uh, but lots, lots of Jews were killed. So they're called deniers. And I was confused by this, just as I for many years, because it looks like denier, you know, the the the, uh, the grading for uh, women's tights. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what do you mean you're a Holocaust denier? That's a strange kind of underwear. But uh, then I, you know, that, that was a seriously, I, did, I, I didn't know it was denier. But den- uh, so you then have all sorts of other things, like a climate denier is actually someone who doesn't believe that humans have caused the changing climate that we have. Uh, and you have all sorts of things. We'll put denier afterwards. So you have a d- secret deniers club where y- it's nothing specific. You just deny everything. Is that like flat earthers as well? Oh, everyone. We bring everyone. Deny. anti Yeah, everyone. We all, everything. So maybe, all maybe you want is a secret society where all of those people exist and it's a secret and none of the rest of us have to listen to it. Yeah, yeah, but it's a secret because you're not allowed to. And we all meet together, and we uh, we all meet because I'm all of those things. Obviously, I deny everything, so I, I like to welcome. But it's a secret. Shh, don't tell anyone. Yeah, but some people are like that, aren't they? They're programmed to deny, and then oh, hang on, yeah, no, that is true. Yeah, but I wanted to. Say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so the problem is... Uh, what yeah, secret society would I like to start? Deniers, uh, you know, might be right, and then... I don't yeah. know. I don't think... I, I, when you think of secret society, I always keep thinking of Dead Poets Society. Okay. Did you ever see that? I saw that. It was a good film, yeah. Very good film. 
conspiracy theorists, but they wouldn't trust the group. Oh, maybe they would deny that the group exists. Exactly. Denying the deniers. Yes. <laughs> In fact, isn't that what happens at top well, above government levels anyway? Yeah. Bilderberg but, groups and stuff like yeah. that. But anyway, what, yeah, well, um, what I think they should do is they should have a double meaning to the group and have, have it as Denny and they all meet and wear tights at the yeah. same time. Yeah. So moving on, I have no, this hasn't, none of these have caught on, so we just move on. It's a quick fire round. You ready for the next one? Everyone ready? Um, ready? It is, if animals could talk, which animal would be the rudest? The macaque. <laughs> that was a very quick answer. Why, why, why would the macaque be the rudest? Because so they're cheeky little monkeys. Fair enough, yes. Yeah, fair enough. yeah um, you would have thought that, um, yeah, some animals do... Oh, especially cheeky, but some of the some of them are big and arrogant. You might think they're quite rude. A polar bear. We we're talking about earlier. I don't know. When you think of things like, um, is it Nick Park? When he yes. did the, do you remember the? Um, uh, this is the guy who did Wallace and Gromit, by yeah, the way. If you didn't yeah, know, yeah. So he did. Um, he did something before. Um, yes, he, Wallace yeah. and Gromit, which had loads of animals that were. Kind of part of an advert for British yeah. gas. A warm creature comforts. Creature comforts, yeah. that's it. It was about gas heating, yeah. yeah. So British gas, central heating and all this sort of stuff. And yeah, each of these animals they gave them an accent and uh, kind of a persona, a kind of the working class. Well, I, I, I believe I just so know, I believe it came the other way. They had some people interviewed who just prattled on and he created the the cartoon animals. Yeah, yeah. Speak, so yeah. all right. So basically, it had a tortoise, and he yeah. matched it with this vocal. Yes, correct. Yeah? Yeah. So it, it is kind of like, yeah, if you if you vocalise something from someone who's from Bolton and talk, well, that's not that's not that that's a particularly good Bolton accent, but someone who talked like uh, that, so Leeds or something, uh, you know, that way, and then you say, oh, what animal does that look good on? A seagull isn't an animal. Well, what is it then? What's she written? I thought of a seagull, but probably doesn't qualify as an animal. But what is it? Is it a robot? I think they're evil spirits come to... <laughs> ah, I think you're confusing the word animal with mammal. Classic school school, school child mistake. You animal. think seagulls would be rude? But it's, well, I think that they would, because they go... Ah, but, well, I can't do a seagull. You know, well. Lee Evans, right? Lee Evans does... Lee Evans does a sketch. Come on, admit it, Pixel Priest. Yeah, you Lee Evans does it, a you sketch. You thought it was a mammal, not animal. Come on. You can admit it now. Uh, I don't think she did. Oh, no. um, Lee Evans does a sketch about seagulls, about being really rock hard. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, they are. Yeah, like hard as nails. Yes. Yeah, and some of them are massive, like proper massive. Some of them are scary. And uh, where I dropped my uh, the school, where I take my children, we did have a problem with them attacking you as you were standing in the playground waiting to pick them up. All right. Because they had obviously they had some young nearby, and yeah. so they. Were attacking us, so they were attacking our children, thinking we were going to attack their children. Seagulls, Seagull, but yes, I think seagulls massive. are right. Having tried to make fun of you, but I haven't got a response for Pixel Priest. So no, I do think, off I do think that there. seagulls probably would be quite. Have you got off in a huff? You can tell. Uh, me. No. Right. Uh, also, shall I do the next one? Yes. <laughs> How many chickens would it take to kill an elephant? This, I think, is possibly the best question. Because we can work out the answer. I mean, just think of it. Um, I mean, you obviously it wouldn't be one chicken. Why not? Well, I, I, it's just not big enough. It get, could get trodden on. And, uh, well, I suppose if the chicken were trained, a trained marksman, uh, and had a... Trained marksman. Yeah, and had a rifle, was at a an distance. An AK-47, yeah, yeah, with a compressor and... Um, well, isn't there such a thing scope. as an elephant gun? There is. I think yeah. it's a massive, if, um, if the a chicken massive had, barrel on it. If the chicken had an elephant gun, it could do it. Well, I, I'm taking it. How many chickens would it take to kill an elephant? It depends. Well, if you stuff the chicken down the throat of an elephant well, and it choked to death. Well, that might, might be chicken. a way, yeah. If it, how many would it have to eat before it died? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and elephants are not meaty, sorry. Ah, you see. Oh, you've admitted it. That, it take, takes all the humour out of it. Yeah. Okay. Uh <laughs> The, uh, Where's the denier in that? It, what? Where's the denier in that? It, it should have denied it. Yes, exactly. You're not a denier. You can't be in my yeah. secret society. Ah, it could be a double bluff. You see, she's yeah. She's actually she's denying that she's in the society, but not denying it. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, 
Um, also, does it not depend on the size of the chicken? <laughs> one stuff it up the trunk. Yes. Um, well, if you've got a chicken the size of an elephant. <laughs> yes, one chicken the size of an elephant. Well, actually, one chicken the size. I don't think they'd win because although it's got the massive beak, uh, it's got quite brittle bones, doesn't it? I think the elephant would still win. I think you'd have it have to have it say five times the size. But I, I think you know, say if you just had chickens, elephant, in a in a battle with each other. You'd have to have loads because it could crush loads. I think you'd need thousands and thousands of them in a in a straight battle. Yeah, I think they'd need. Purpose. Neither of them are trained, and there's no human intervention. They're putting it up the trunk idea. I great idea. I think it would work. Think but I, sure. I, uh, that sounds like a that sounds like a line from Carry On, doesn't it? But I think uh, Carry On up the trunk. Well, as we've learned actually earlier in the show, they have massive. Um, Trunks, Trunks. So, so, yeah. you know, that is a... Uh, yes, yeah, but I think if you put thousands of chickens next to an elephant, they'd probably just sort of scratch away and peck around yeah, the... Yeah, we've got the, to assume the, that they have the, some sort of motivation. They'd need a motivation. There'd have to be something there. You'd, so that you'd they, have to... They had to take the, the ninja stance mm. against the elephant. Yeah. And the elephant would take the defensive ninja... Trunk. Stance. Trunk, yes. Against the yeah. chickens. Yeah, well, I think we've answered that. Why, even, why is that the best question, Pete? I thought it was funny. Okay, what, Go on, then. what would be the worst? <clears throat> what would be the worst ever buy one get one free sale of all time? <laughs> you think of any? So you buy one, you get one free. I know what it means. How about uh, how about you? But you know, how about arranging an overdraft, for example? Uh, you end up with with less money than you started. How about? Um, I mean, be political. How about a Tory government? You get two. Two for the price How of How about one. a Labour government? You could, there isn't a Labour government, what are you talking about? Uh, there's been government. How about a Greenpeace government? How about... Uh, yeah, whatever. Um, I don't know, because if Actually, it's that... Actually, we're big that, fans here of the Tory government, so if it, if please it, don't shut us down. If it's that bad, yeah, you wouldn't buy one first, why, would you? Buy one, get one. No, but it's, it's, it's saying the worst. You might not actually go for it, but say there's an advert saying... Buy one, get one free. Uh, how about, um, how about um, what, what do they call it, the funeral package? Well, you only have one funeral, don't you? Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good answer, a funeral. <laughs> buy one, get one free. <laughs> I wouldn't buy it. Do you know what that instantly makes me think of? Uh, no. Monty Python and um, the meaning of life. Yes. When she goes around and says, can we have your liver? Yes. I, I remember exactly the one, yes. You do, don't you? Yeah, well, uh, he, uh, it just has that song about the um, going through space in the middle yeah. of that, yeah. That's right. Um, yeah, the uh, yeah. so buy one, get one free. Anyone thought, oh, I quite like that. That was another quick fire one. That's good. I've got one more, I think. Oh, here we go. Can I read it? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's so if you, if you were arrested with no explanation, what would your friends and family assumed you'd done? Yes. That's a good question. Yeah. That's better than the chicken question. I like the chicken question. I could always gift the other one. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Give yeah, the Give yeah. the death funeral thing give to someone else. Give the funeral to someone yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, another, uh, uh, just going back to that, I guess, yeah, if you if you hired a hitman to kill someone, do you really want another one? But I, I was thinking then, I thought, you might. There might be someone else you hate. So, you know, uh, it probably, probably is a good idea. In fact, what, what are you pointing to? And adjust your expectations according to your no, well-being. No, I'm pointing at you. Oh, right. Oh, oh I'm the one who's going to get... Oh, right. No, I'm, I'm concerned that your brain's gone down the route of, hmm, <laughs> if I hire myself a hitman, I might get two for the price yeah. of one. Or maybe, This yes. actually sounds like a good deal. Sounds like a plan, yes, it yeah. does. It. So no, I was thinking of hiring myself out. Yeah, okay. So if you were arrested with no explanation, what would your friends and family assume well, you've done? Well, these days, um, because... Um, I've sort of talked about it. Um, it would be the similar to what would have happened to me when I was abroad earlier. So, um, slightly religious bit here. Um, I, I worked in China for a bit, and I was preaching uh, about Jesus and trying to convert local people, which was strictly illegal. And I went there in order to do it, and I was there for years. Um, did, so, anyone, did anyone accost you for No, your, no your... one accosted me, but although huh? I did have to leave reasonably hurriedly because they got um, someone did report me. 
So, and that took years before you reported? Yeah, two years before I was reported. And do you know who reported you? I'm pretty sure it was, yes. I think it was someone who came um, to the school that I was running. Speeding in my motorised wheelchair. Yeah, so I, 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 I think, so bringing it up to date, that was years ago, I think hate speech. Because what, what is the normal beliefs of Christians is many people regard them as hate speech. I don't think that it would stick because there'd be lots of examples, well, several examples of people standing on the street just saying what's in the Bible so, and people being accused of hate speech. The police arrest them and then say, oh, no, there isn't a charge and they mm-hmm. release them. So that, that's what they would assume, maybe. Um, uh, speeding my motorised wheelchair, yes, that, they'd assume that, would they? Yeah, have, you got, have you got a V8? Yeah. A V8 big engine. engine in a, a big in engine a motorised wheelchair. wheelchair. Mm. Yeah. Is it jet engine, jet propelled? What, uh, what would they assume for you, then, uh, Anxious L? Is there something people would say? I mean, would it be... I mean, people might assume that about me, but they might say, no, it's a car driving accident. Uh, uh, on my past history, to be bluntly honest, um, I think my friends and family would assume I was drunk and disorderly. OK. Yeah, but I think that, um, I think to be honest, um, as I moved away from that kind of... Um, Lifestyle? Well, yeah, that kind of that kind of world, I suppose. I think it'd probably be similar to you about probably being too honest for my own good. In maybe, some maybe situation, streaming something illegally. Well, not illegally, but something that well, might. Actually. I mean, this is this is my fear in the streaming sense is about saying something that. Um, uh, I mean, let's let's talk about um, freedom of speech. Yeah. All right, and the lack of it. That's what we're talking about, isn't it? That through freedom of speech, someone takes offence. And it kicks off into something that is just ridiculous and stupid. And we see that evident in the world today. Yeah. Yeah. So I just somehow have managed yeah. to get myself r- roped up in something like that. Yes, that could have. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, you remember, what was it? I think it's, people would assume that because well, your life is wrapped up a lot in streaming these days. Yes, so absolutely. Assuming, yeah. And whether it be me, a client, um, or uh, any of us lot, as Wallace Unleashed and stuff. Um, or our church stuff, that someone's said something inappropriate or something like that and it's been taken out of context. Or they've said something inappropriate and it was just a dumb thing to say. So, you know, where does that go? I mean, do you remember that story on Twitter about that woman who, as getting on a plane to Africa, Mm. put a tweet out, something about... um, Something about I think it was I think there was some kind of semi racist comment in there. Uh, it was regarded as racist, but I can't yeah. I but can't I think there was something about that and something about get not getting AIDS. Oh yeah. yes, yes. It was, it was something about that and um yeah, by the yeah. time she landed she'd been fired. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, so, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. She'd she'd managed to go viral with this statement. Yeah. Yes. Her company had fired her and that was before she got off the plane. Yes. And yeah. it's stupid, isn't it? Well I think and, I think it's silly. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. And because, I, uh, I think even I th- if it were racist, um, it just means she shouldn't have made the comment. Doesn't mean she should be. Yeah, absolutely. Lying. And it, it, that's the problem is that um, it's cowering to uh, people making decisions and cowering to the masses. Yeah. That's the issue. So if it if it kind of blows up virally and it gets like a lot of um, support by let's say for example the left, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm talking the hard left or something like that, it blows up, then, of course, you know, someone has to send the right message. Because yeah. otherwise, you know, if you're not the person that's endorsing that, yeah. it could work out badly for you. Yeah. So I, mean, I just like, you know, I think this is a... It, it, there, that's what I think would probably be, or probably the first thing, um, drunk and disorderly somewhere. Yeah, uh, here's the thing, you see, it's interesting that freedom of speech is not in the Bill of Rights. It's not part of a... Britain does have a constitution, and, and it is written... Uh, despite what people often think, but it's not codified. It's written in all lots of different laws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and but there is no guaranteed freedom of speech apart from for MPs in Parliament, uh, and they are protected. And because they're protected like that, they're not allowed, for example, to call someone a liar. Uh, they get. It's not that there's not freedom of speech. What they do is they throw them out, because uh, you end up not because you could you could accuse people of anything because you got freedom of speech. 
They just take you out of the situation so that you can have civilised debate if you start insulting or calling them liars. Um, but um, you do you can say you, you have immunity from saying it there, but it isn't anywhere else. Although by tradition, speaker's corners, um, it, it's allowed. That's, um, and it, I, it was only relatively recently I found out there were, there were quite a few speaker's corners. I thought there was just the one, Hyde Park Corner in London. Well, there's so one. What do, you, what do you mean? There's by one speaker, near here. What do you mean by speaker's corner? A speaker's corner is when, where in a particular community, a particular town, like in the city of London, yeah. um, they say, "Well, yes, you can't say whatever you want everywhere, but we're going. You can if you stand there, you can come and say your opinion, and people have a debate." Really? Yeah. And in London, at Hyde Park Corner, the speaker's corner, people for many years have you know taken their soapbox, whatever, stood on a little box. And uh, spoken out to the crowd. I think they stopped you being able to do that. People used to take step ladders. Um, I'm not sure about that. I think they did stop it. Um, the reason is there's a large number of uh, Muslims go there, and um, it was getting a little bit unruly. I don't mean because they're uh, necessarily because they're Muslims. It, well, it might be because of that, but uh, I meant because of the numbers. Ah, oh, right. The numbers it gets unruly. So, um, uh, oh, so there was there was risk. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, so they enough. tried to take it. They tried to reduce the possibility of it being confrontational. But um, yeah, people still go there. And but if you go on YouTube, that's interesting. Speak so speakers' corner. So is there a speakers' corner in Wallasey? There is, but it isn't used. I was thinking of resurrecting it. And there's a little plaque so saying that it there. is. I know you exactly. Go there and say I could. whatever you like. I know exactly where it is. And you can say Should whatever you like. You? Because it, it's somewhere that we that I've been going. Well, I hang, on go regularly. hang on a second. I'm just let clarify. Yes. What speaker's corner? So you can go there and say whatever you like. Well, yes, but only by tradition. The law doesn't protect you. So what you'd have to do is argue. Well, I was on a speaker's corner. It hasn't been tested in law. What do you here. mean the law doesn't protect you? Well, there isn't a law specifically saying you can say whatever you'd like. At but, speaker's well, corner. What I'm trying to understand but by is tradition. If, if I went to speaker's corner. Say and the I, one that's used in, in London. Yeah, whatever. If I went to whatever is designated as Speaker's Corner, which is a legitimate thing you're telling me, I can say whatever I like. So that could be racist, it could be well, homophobic, that, that's it could be the anything like that. That's the tradition, yes. Yeah, so I can say whatever I want, hate speech and yeah. stuff, and I can't be arrested. Well, no. well, that's the problem with it. It's only by tradition. And just lately, police have tried started taking people... Well, they have not arrested them. Well, they've arrested them to take them out of the situation. Uh, there's, uh, I've been following a few people who go regularly to Speaker's Corner to argue for the Christian faith. One of them is called Hatun Tash, an ex-Muslim. Mm -hmm. And because she's an ex-Muslim, so she will often say, you know, contrast Christianity with Islam. It was getting a bit heated. Um, and they took her out of there. But she... Um, well, she's five foot two, I believe. She's got a small woman, so not really intimidating uh, physically, uh, but was obviously intimidating the poor chaps who were surrounding her. Mm. Um, but they took her out of the situation on a few occasions, police have. She was hit um, on one occasion. Um, what, that I saw what, in the video. What, egg? Fist? No, no, right. fist. Well, well, a slap like this. No, yeah. Um, and she just went back the next day. So she, uh, she, she's obviously very determined, but... Well, I would say there's two different laws. There's common law and then there's the written law. Yeah. And in Britain, you know, it's it's up for grabs which one wins in a court case, isn't it? You know, so uh, it, 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 the most the most uh, common one that's known is common law wife. Yeah. Uh, you never had to get married in a church to be married. If you were with someone as if you were married, you were married, which actually, I could, you know, I say, think that's also the biblical position, but, you know. That's for another day, perhaps, to argue that. Oh, okay. But uh, if you... So common law means it. this is... It's regarded, it's had precedent, because it's always been the case. The same thing is used, say, for a, a right of way. If someone... I've, there's a certain number of years which I've forgotten. I used to know when I did a lot of hiking. Um, if someone keeps walking across your land, it becomes a right of way. There's nothing you can do about it. Because, yeah. So you've got to stop... You have to physically stop them. That's what people sometimes try and do, so it isn't... For, for long enough to make it a right away. So it's because there's precedent. And that's the way uh, British law and, uh, you know, then people who follow our lead, like in America, their law, it goes on, on precedent. It's not just the written law. So by precedent, people have been able to say what they like at speaker's corners. Uh, but if it were tested in court, I don't know what would happen.
at the moment, High Park Corner is the only one that's used widely. Maybe others aren't used, but there's certainly a speaker's corner that's designated as such. It's got a little plaque saying it, and I'll tell you where it is. It's right next to where the ferries used to dock, ne- outside the ferry pub by the, by the river. Oh, right. Where I used to have a regular sort of church worship jamboree, a monthly, jamboree. called Pint of Praise. Yeah, uh, but yes, right near there, there's a Speaker's Corner. Let's bring it back. That's See, I, I, think, I think what you need to do is look up Speaker's Corner for next week. Uh, because I think that there must be hilarious outcomes from these speakers' corners. There must well, be I mean, stuff. There's, 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 yeah, the pro- there's a lot of stuff that I've seen. Because uh, as I follow a few of these people, uh, you know, my purpose is to pray for them, which I, I follow their ministry. I think yeah, I'm taking, I'm taking the non-serious look yeah. at speakers' corners. Yeah, yeah, but there's also, yeah, there's the, also the, silly ones. The yeah. silly thing, so it's almost like um, thinking of uh, Screaming Lord Such. Yeah, yeah, on yeah. Speaker's Corner. Yes, yes. Saying that, you know, free, now, there free was, hot dogs for everyone. Yeah, yeah. There was a famous... Uh, Preacher was there for every year. So I just forgotten his name. Uh, he was a uh, was he Methodist? Um, he was he he was there all the time, mm. and he he was famous for an interaction. Someone called out, "Will there be?" He he was famous for being teetotal and calling people to not drink alcohol, mm-hmm. and he was said uh, he was saying, "Well, what it will, what will it be like in heaven?" And he said, "In heaven." Light wines will be allowed, which was just a hilarious response. Uh, I thought it was funny anyway. Uh, but yeah, it's, the, yeah it, it's, uh, it's an interesting thing, that is. What has takes precedent? Common law, precedent, what people have always done, or is it the written law? Um, I, I think Speaker's Corners are such a great idea. Giving people a place where they can say anything uh, means that you get an opportunity for the good ideas to win. If they never bash against each other, you never hear some ideas. Only the official narrative wins. Only, you know, either what experts or what the supposed experts or what governments tell mm. you win. Only what the mainstream media tells you is acceptable. Then you end up with the truth being obscured. You might never hear it. Or that might be the truth, you know. But at least if he gets to fight against uh, these opposing views. You see, I don't think... You should have laws, for example, against um, uh, uh, saying that the Holocaust didn't happen. I think that it did happen, but I think should, people should be able to argue their case. And then, uh, oh yeah, there you are. See, case been. I've never, I've not been there in person when it's been when there's been people there. I've been to the place where it happens. I, I think on Sundays is when it gets really busy. You see, and I tend to be busy on Sundays. But that's interesting. Okay? Who who was the uh, Kate, who was your the most entertaining thing? Have you got something you heard that you could share with us? Something funny? I mean, maybe, uh, maybe something doesn't come to mind. But if it does, that'd be funny. Yeah, speakers' corners. We should bring it back in Wallasey. Any any takers for going down there one day when it all opens up in the summer and uh, using speakers' corners? Yeah, I'm gonna have a look. Um, okay, should we move on? I think yeah, th- those are all the. the we've yeah, got a couple of we've fascinating got a couple of things, topics, but. Just yeah. before you go to the next comment. Yeah, yeah go yeah. ahead. I'm just looking uh, it up on my screen here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was about the BBC. That's Yeah. yeah. Well, I've so, got one about yeah. one of the topics. So, is so, about so, the so, BBC. so, 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 before I, I move on, yes. I sent you, you this the other day, yes. and um, oh, it was a, a meme I found on Facebook, and it's been doctored to actually, uh, which I thought was quite good. I'm going to see if I can blow this up. Which... Yeah, let's see if we can see. Yes, we so were, let me move we were criticising the BBC uh, last this, week. I don't know who the guys at the bottom who um, had posted this. I don't suppose it matters. No, no. no. Actually, I've got, I've got a method. Hang on one sec. Yeah. I just want to make sure. I just reminded me, we, we, last week we were talking about the BBC. I thought that they weren't as good as they used to be and were very, very biased. BBC now stands for Biased Broadcasting Corporation. That was Jehovah's Witness. Jehovah's Witness was funny. Um, I guess, I mean, some of what they say I would find... Okay, um, right. I've got a method here. Visible, but were they were they seriously funny? Actually, I've got another method here. Just one sec. Let me just blow this up. Uh, uh, actually, I've known some Joe's witnesses. A, a great company when you talk to them on the doorstep. Some of them can be quite funny. Okay, yeah, so all, maybe that's do. the case. Let me move this. Across. Anyway, let's go to the BBC now. Yes. So this is something I. It, this is um, uh, the comment someone put on there saying this is a powerful statement and needs to be shared. So this is actually from uh, a, a piece of artwork. Which I think is from uh, possibly the Second World War. Yes, in I, this I case, I can find it. It's been doctored for the BBC, yeah. ITV, 
Good morning, Britain and Sky News. You notice, so, uh, Al, that uh, the truth has become visible, just as you asked there. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Mm. I might find the original image in a minute. That'd but, be interesting, yes. But uh, I think that goes uh, in hand in glove with what I was saying, because you were saying you weren't happy about the beeb, and I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, maybe you've got a point here. Uh, but actually, and I think I mentioned the point, I thought maybe they're all the same. Oh, yeah, I, I don't watch any of those people. Yeah, okay, well, there you go. Yeah, Let's just, I, let me just, I just turn, turn off the TV. And switch on Flame Radio, flameradio.org. <laughs> right, okay. That is, that's just, the address. Let me just, yeah, okay, I'm just moving this back. Right. Uh, does that work again? Oh, we yeah, back? Here we go. yeah, we're that's back. Right, we're okay. back, right, okay. So, let's go with this one. Let me just copy it. Right, okay, so we're going to see the original. Oh, no, I've got, yeah. I've got it up already. Right, here we go. Uh, right, yeah, here we I go. Just, I just got my thing. Yeah, let's have a look. Oh, this is, yeah, oh, sorry. The, yeah, I just thought, because we were talking about that, I thought... Wonder what Trustpilot says. I, yeah, so what do people think of the BBC? Because this is how you would recommend a a, a particular business. Uh, look, you look go to Trustpilot.com. Yeah, Trustpilot. Now, look, there's been quite a few reviews of the BBC, 7,768. So, you know, you, you the percentages work, you know, as soon as you've got over 100, I guess, percentages sort of work. Um, excellent. 4% of people thought the BBC was excellent. 1% great, less than 1% average. 1% poor, 93% bad. <laughs> That's, uh, I think that if you scroll down, I think there may be some actual reviews. Here you are. BBC are not fit for purpose. It's about time they were gone. Yes, Brian. Brian Boyle yeah, certainly well believes done, that. Well done, Brian. Well, Tom Gibb says... I'm sure they do their best. I'm sure they do their best, but I'd rather not pay for something I don't use. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yes, okay. I'm not sure they do their best, but yeah. Damien Cage likes them. I think the BBC are great. Yes. That was I an think, hour ago. I think he, he makes a cogent, well-argued point. Have, um, have to pay BBC to watch live content. Have to pay BBC to watch live content on other channels, scammers. Yeah, like yeah well, I, that's a point that I was also saying. Here you go. This one's long. You can read this. <laughs> it's no longer fit for purpose. Being so biased against anything remotely pro-British can continue to attempt to rewrite our history and taking things out of context. The classic being slavery. Virtually no mention that we were the first country to ban it and used our navy for the next century or so, stopping others from doing it. Um, I agree entirely with his comment. Uh, I wouldn't trust... Shall I do this one? Yeah. I wouldn't trust the BBC to tell, tell me it got dark at night night and they probably put a woke slant on it anyway the bbc is no longer the organization it was it just panders to the islington elite and any cause that undermines what it sees as bad yes yeah yeah, yeah. oh auntie beeb needs to retire hmm. all the supercilious lovies want to bring forward their personal slant on a news item or historical issue which they see as wrong there is no objectivity. It's the opinions of people who see themselves as superstars, and yet they are the ones who worshipped Bashir and in, intimidated the police into allowing them to film and search Cliff Richard's home. Yes. I think the next historical wrong they divulge will be the Anglo Saxon uh, resistance to Norman conquest or the fight against the Romans. It's a toss up whom they choose to support as it all depends on which way the reporter looks that day. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is the problem. They <coughs> do have a bit of a dodgy history now that's coming out into that. that. Bashir, what a... That uh, is, um, yeah. I mean, that's in the last week, isn't it? Since yeah, you yeah. and I had this conversation. Yeah. Uh, it's funny how these things happen, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, that We influence the news, I think, here on the show. Uh, right? Yeah, clearly. Yeah. But that is... Um, I'm actually pretty... Um, it's, I mean, there's a whole thing. I mean, look, there's a whole thing going on right now, with regards to the royal family, Harry, William, yeah. Meghan, all of this lot. We just lost um, um, Phil, Prince Philip, yeah, uh, and of course this is all going COVID, and the Queen sat on her own at husband's funeral of nine thousand years, yes. and yeah, it's it's not good. And then that happens. Um, I kind of, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I can't remember why it came out this week. I mean, I think this was known back in the nineties when he did the interview with Diana, which is the, yeah, what is it? What was his name? Is it Lord Holt? 
Yeah, there was a report on it, wasn't there? Um, yeah, so something crapped up, and then it was investigated again, and then the BBC... Uh, I don't know. I, I, w- I read through it, but strangely enough, I read through it on the BBC News. Uh, so, yeah, but it, it, uh, it was quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, my question is, is, what's going to happen as a result of that? Uh, nothing. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. Because Bashir says that although he was wrong in what he did was uh, he falsified, faked some bank, some letters from some bank transactions, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, fake documents, um, in order to persuade her that she should do this interview. Uh, but he then says, but that doesn't take away from the fact he that it was her own decision. Uh, he actually uses a language. He says it that he is a Christian and properly repentant of it. Really? Yeah. What do you make of that? Um, well, I he then said that effectively it was her own fault. So hang I on, didn't hang quite. On, hang on. Let's, let's see. Let's see your face as you explain. Um, you. I mean. So you. I read he, an article on it. He in, says he's a Christian and he's properly repentant. So, but I think properly repentant includes, you know, um, admitting the, the effects of what you've done. Um, no, I had a discussion but with him. I, By I the think, way, I think what he's doing though is he's is he's not admitting the effects of what he's done. No, he's not. So that's what I mean. I don't so he's saying that, that look, irrespective of the fact that I falsified bank transactions to therefore support the idea of, um, I guess, um, some corruption towards Princess Diana, mm. uh, which would have obviously been felt, I think, anyway. Uh, that kind of thing really is kind of like, it, it is kind of switching the decision mm. making of what you're going to potentially say next. The outcome of that interview, I think, will have been directly supportive of the fact that that information was divulged. Yes. Absolutely. Exactly. I don't think that you say that even if she agreed to do the interview, would it have been quite what it was? No, no. And, and the thing is, he'd had a. And he's saying. She had a history of similar things, doing similar things, uh, falsifying documents. Uh, in the report, it mentions some, some previous thing he did. Yeah, well. So, uh, exactly. He's a snake. Uh, now, now, yes. He says, he says that I'm a Christian and I'm properly repentant. Yes. Well, I saw that's this between report, him, I saw oh, on well, that's it, Premier News. Yeah, well, that's, that's between him and God. Isn't if it? someone wants At the end of the day, that's between him and God. Well, it but is, but it, when you have it, repent- it takes some sand. I think, you know, like somewhat sand. Oh, have you not heard the phrase? No. What does it mean? Uh, well, some real balls to do oh, okay. something like that. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I actually got, I got that quote from um, Gangs of New York. There you go. So it takes some real sand to go into somebody's house and rob them blind. Yeah. It was it was some real guts and stuff. That's where that came from. So, um, yeah. It. To do that knowingly, yeah, um, yeah, it, it's almost a, it's so corrupt of mind. Mm, I agree. That yeah. that actually, yeah, I mean, look, I'm not saying the bloke's not forgivable. Uh, I'm not saying that he's not truly really repentant either. Are you not? Well, I suppose you well, can't. No, you can't I, see I, I don't know. No. I don't know if he is or not. I don't know what he's going to do. I to think, try, to try yeah, and yeah, maybe, it. I mean, at the end maybe of the day, take further action. Yeah, well, maybe. I don't know. Maybe he won't. Maybe he's repentant to God. Yeah, but I, I, I don't think that, that works. If you, if you're repentant to God, but you then don't change, change your ways. Well, you don't try. I don't, you obviously you can be repentant to God and not succeed, but if you repent to God and you never intended to change your ways, that's a different matter. Like you know I say, I mean? on the other issue, uh, the other issue is why was he retired in 2016 and promoted to religious editor? Yes, he was. He was a religious editor. Yeah, oh. it was interesting that I, I think they tend to like to go to people from other faiths these days as a religious editor. Yeah, that 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 might be. Uh, yeah, it, it, I don't know. Uh, would I be wrong in saying that's got anything to do with the colour of his skin? Perhaps. Um, maybe. I might be wrong. I don't know. But uh, was he? Was he? Uh, was he retired in order that he wouldn't uh, take any more flack for it? I don't know. Well, interesting. But the BBC as a whole, you see, people don't trust it because of that. I mean, Bashir was mentioned, but he was mentioned as an example of what the BBC has become. Uh, it did. It's well, interesting. It's interesting. The BBC, as I said before. Well, hang on. Let's go back to the phone scandal. Eh? Oh yeah. So who who was the biggest part of the phone scandal? I don't Wasn't know. that Rupert Murdoch's lot? 
Wasn't that the um, News of the World? The, I can't remember. Rehired, yes, yes. Not, not retired, yeah, yeah. rehired. Thank you. Yeah, yes. he was rehired. You're right, yeah. Um, yeah, wasn't that News of the World? And Murdoch yeah, just I, shut the paper down yeah, the following day. Yeah. I was and then that went off like a powder keg, the number of people involved in that sort of stuff. Yeah, the phone hacking stuff, yeah. yeah. So it, it's not that... I mean, Bashir's, I suspect, is just one in many yeah, I journalists mean, seeking their own fortune yeah, and the fame. thing is... Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I agree. I think that the the problems with the BBC are more its overall slant and bias, which means that in the end, it's not really worth news of the world. What did I call it? it? I thought that's what you said. I might call it news of the day. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well done. Good clarification. Yeah, yeah. The world. But um, yeah, have so you ever I, seen? I have you ever seen a film called Nightcrawler? No, it's strangely I've heard the name. Yeah, but I don't. I so have Night, no idea. Nightcrawler is Jake Gyllenhaal. I think that's, that's worth heard yeah. Yeah. That's... Because he was in I, I'm a, I like the Spider Man films, he was in that. That's why I knew of the film. Yeah. yeah. Was he? Yeah, he was in the Spider Man film. Yeah. He was oh. the he was the villain in Spider Man Two, Far From Home, came out a couple of years ago. Shut up. He played Mysterio. Spider Man Two Far From Home. You reckon was Jake Gyllenhaal? He would play Mysterio, yeah. He was good. He was a very good villain. And he got a good rapport with uh, uh, Tom Holland, who plays Spider-Man, in interviews. It was a very funny relationship. There he is. Yeah. There he is. Look, I haven't seen this. It's a very... It's, it, for, as a Spider-Man film, for, fa for fans of Spider-Man films and action films, the last bit of it, the last fight, the last segment with the fight, which is often the dullest bit in super superhero films, is, is brilliantly shot. And it it has the Spider Man. It's within you know it, the story is about his character, which makes it good. And in the way that he fights, you see that his character has developed. I, mm. I liked it. It was a great film. Anyway, and Jake Gyllenhaal yeah, was very was very good because he what he you liked him and yet you knew he was evil, which is a good way to to have that connection with the villain as well. Is very good. Uh, I'm sure it's called Nightcrawler. Yeah, I'd heard the name. It, it, uh, uh, you know, at the time I was th I was just interested in because of what he was in that film, but uh, the the Spider Man film. But uh, yeah, uh, what what happens in Nightcrawler anyway? What's it all uh, about? I think I'm just finding it for you. There it is. Right. Okay. Two thousand and one. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, that's so that's some time ago. Yeah. When Louis Bloom, a con man, desperate for work, muscles into the world of LA crime journalism, he blurs the line between observer and participant to become the star of his own story. And this time, it's personal. Anyway, if you've not seen it and you want something, I, I have to admit that... Um, I, I've never had such a hatred for a character in a film. Oh, that was Quite it. like he, I've he, had for that. And this is the Jay Gyllenhaal character. Yeah, and yeah, he's, and, he's and obviously good at that. Yes. It is absolutely phenomenal how much villain, you I can mean. detest somebody as a as a as a viewer of a film. Mm. And I think it was in the year. What was it? Nineteen? Uh, sorry, two thousand fourteen. Two thousand one. So oh, two thousand fourteen. Oh, right. So it was interesting. It it was it was a topic of conversation when I went to media college when I started studying video mm -hmm. and film and that sort of stuff. And my media tutor was the one that said that she actually had never seen a film where she hated the protagonist so much right. oh, yeah. and it was like, I, it, like I, and, I and it, it was like astounding mm. I mean well, my, I don't, my I don't son know is studying film at the got. moment uh, 7.8 out, out of 10 sorry go on what was that I say my son's uh, studying film at the moment so I pointed out to him yeah uh, Nightcrawler was um, yeah. yeah I mean he's a phenomenal actor oh yeah he I was in so. Donnie Darko which you know um, great film uh, what was it he was in? Uh, was it The Code? I thought it was quite a good futuristic thing. Where he was, uh, Yeah, I haven't seen that one. That yeah. was one where he was, um, it's a bit Groundhog Day, but, 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 but yes. way. But it's good. Yeah, yes, I like But Jake. the BBC, just, just to conclude, uh, yeah. to me, it's not the um, sleaze to do with it. What the problem is more their overall bias, which I say isn't necessarily to one particular party. As some of the reviewers were saying, it's this Islington elite which is, you might say, it's like it's the same group of people 
the same sort of mindset that's currently running the Labour Party. Uh, in the past, I have voted for the Labour Party, okay. um, but I wouldn't now because they're, they're part of this belief set, which I don't hold to at all. Mm. They're, they're not on the side of the working man and woman. They're on the side of these particular... You're making political statements now, aren't you? Yes, yes. particular slightly strange... Um, you know, a subset of the world who have these, what to, to me and to, I guess to most of the north of England, weird beliefs. Right, and let's so move on to well our final thing before we get too political. Um, oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So, so no, you've well, got the BBC, we've got one well, more thing. We might, I think we might have to create new content called Political Pete yeah. and uh, Anxious Al. <laughs> I don't know. You remain anxious. We'll, we'll, we'll do something, and maybe we'll have a bit of a chat about pol uh, politics. Yeah, I think... um, we'll, we'll have to create a new channel for it. That if it gets banned, a new it show, maybe it doesn't yeah, blow yeah. up the rest I of think, us. Um, so. Yeah, I think the politics uh, <laughs> are on. If you're trying to get people to watch it through social media, because the same sort of um, mindset that seems to have taken over the BBC has taken all, over all the big tech, like uh, Facebook and YouTube and the like. Um, I don't know about Twitch. Maybe they're they're okay. I don't know, but um, well, we're on YouTube as well. Yeah, but uh, they tend to so they tend to censor you uh, in a well, soft censorship of not letting people see your content if you're part type of politics that they don't approve of. Yeah, um, I guess they're a private companies, so they can do it. I guess I don't know. Okay. Right, ready? I'm ready for the next one. Yeah, right, let's go. Our for final it. topic for the night. Yeah, this is it. Uh, have we got anyone left with us? Uh, where's my restream? Yeah, everyone's still here. That's cool. Um, yeah. So, um, well, this is this is the big one. Then we save the sort of important one to the end. Uh, this is ten things you can do to save our planet. Nice. Um, and that's the World Wildlife Fund. Um, the WWF. Yeah. Isn't that something to do with wrestling? I, I'd say that in case you misread it, that has WTF. Uh, it is not that. It's WWF. Well, I thought about. I was actually thinking about this. I was. I was looking at a way you could use WTF, and rather than being the the the, the F word being the F that you know it to be, is replace it with faith. What the what the faith? What the faith? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So these are serious. This is serious you, you, suggestions you, you from the world. Prove, you prove that. I do. Let's uh, use it. Okay. Go okay, for it, man. You have it. So this article now. So this is something to talk about and to think about to, to leave you with as we go towards the end. This is not the end of the stream. I'm just saying when we finish this section, um, I really appreciate feedback from this. I think we both would. Uh, this is things to do to save our planet. Right. The scale of challenges facing our planet can seem daunting, but can we all do something? Well, here are t ten simple ways you can help reduce your impact and help in the fight against. Climate change. That's the big baddie of this story. That's why I'm saying it like that. Okay, number one. Let's go to it. Let's see what we can do. Nice picture of a bee. Uh, number one, uh, use your voice. Uh, now, we don't have to sign the petitions here. You can go to this site yourself if you choose to. Maybe you won't agree with these points. That's, that's, this is from the World Wildlife uh, Fund. Uh, use your voice. We are the first generation to know we're destroying the world. And we could be the last that can do anything about it. Speaking up is one of the most powerful things you can do, especially if it's to the right people. Talk to your MP. Tell them to commit to action to protect our natural world. Contact the brands you buy from and get them to tell you how their products are sourced. Use social media. This is one of the most effective ways to get brands to listen to you. So tell them you want a change. It's not just about speaking to the people in charge. Talk to your friends and neighbours and colleagues and get them to make positive changes too. Speak up. Speak to everyone. Make your voice heard. What do you think? That's something we can all do. Uh, I'm trying to understand. Make, make your voice heard. Well, I was trying to get, put a bit of passion Are you selling it. that? Yeah. Okay. yeah. I was selling it, you see. Huh? Yeah, I was trying to sell yeah, it. Okay, but, nice one. Okay, yeah. sign the state of that. Nature petition. Well, we don't need to do that. But, yes, I was uh, thinking of mammal. No, hang on. News of the world. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Thinking of mammal. That was animal instead. Oh, animal animal yeah, versus mammal. Well, often then. confused. So. Shall I read the next bit? Yeah, do the next one. Yeah. Would you Go like ahead. me to do some acting as well? I, I really wanted impassioned. Yes. Be informed. One of the best things you can do is to keep yourself informed. The more you know, the better. 
It leaves you better equipped to have those conversations with your friends and family and the people you want to influence. Get yourself clued up on the facts, stay up to date with recent news on the state of our natural world and work out what you can do. We have the world at our fingertips, so learn from influential people. Keep up with the news and research organisations that are working to make our planet a better place. Was that right? Yeah, that was good, yes. Okay. I'm, I'm all fired up now. Oh, go on, then. Okay, let's uh, be political. Now, you see, this is a lesson to us. We're trying not to be political on this show, but um, they're saying to, to do it. So, everyone in the UK over the age of 18 can vote for their MP. This is an opportunity to vote for someone who is representative of you and your views and will make the environment a top priority. Being politically engaged is not limited to voting, and it certainly isn't limited by how young you are. Every year, more and more young people are working together to show our political leaders they want change. And when do they want it? Now. We need to ensure we hold our politicians accountable. You can do that by contacting your local MP or attending constituency meetings where you will have an opportunity to make your voice heard. Find out who your MP is and how you can contact them. By the way, I do have a particular slant on this. I'll tell you at the end what my view of this is. Yeah. Uh, but it's broadly positive. Um, I just broadly. say that. Okay. Yeah, mostly positive. Travel responsibly. Yes. One of the most efficient ways of lowering your environmental impact is by travelling responsibly. This means whenever you can, choosing a more sustainable way to get from A to B. Yes. Walk or cycle when you can. Yes. Transport is one of the most polluting sectors of the UK. Sadly. But holidaying closer to home can make a big impact on your carbon footprint. Yes. One short haul flight, return flight, can uh, account for 10% of your yearly carbon emissions. Oh, no. And long-haul flights can completely de de determine your carbon impact. Mm. Um, if you have the time, you can usually get trains to European destinations to cut your carbon footprint. Mm. Get creative and try to find alternative ways to travel. If you do choose to go abroad and are looking to see the local wildlife, keep in mind how to go about it eth ethically. How to go about it ethically. Attractions that involve you being able to pet, hold or feed animals for money are generally a no-go. Be wary of attractions involving the unnatural interactions with animals. As a rule, observe animals from afar in their natural habitat and look to support local conservation projects. Uh, just as an aside, I uh, once went to a zoo in China uh, where they had um, some lions um, they threw live chickens for them to eat to uh, um, entertain the visitors. Yeah, but just as uh, an, an interest to you, this Thai zoo I went to, they yes. had a tiger yes. that was so drugged off its head so they could put kids on its back for photographs. Brilliant, yes. So th I, I guess that's all in line with what they were just saying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, eat sustainably. Food production is a major driver of wildlife extinction. What we eat contributes around a quarter of global greenhouse gas emissions and is responsible for almost 60% of global biodiversity loss. Farming animals for meat and dairy requires space and huge inputs of water and feed. Today, one of the biggest causes of forest loss is the expansion of agricultural land for animal feed production, such as soy. And producing meat creates vastly more carbon dioxide than plants, such as vegetables, grains and legumes. Moving away from a meat-dominated diet towards a more plant-based diet can lower your impact on the environment. <laughs> uh, Ah, sorry, I was just I was losing my uh, mojo there trying to say this uh, seriously. Hang on. Vegetarian and vegan foods are massively on the rise and becoming far more common in restaurants, cafes and supermarkets. So, so, so did she say common or far more sorry, common? Did I say she? Sorry, that's wrong. Yes. Did it say common? Yes. Yeah, see I thought I thought I was thinking more more along the, the, the phrase fashionable. Yes, Here maybe, on. yeah. Here you go. Uh Oh, so you you won't struggle to find the food. So not only that, but cutting down on meat and dairy products can reduce your weekly food bills. Oh, yes, it could do that. All right, I'm on board with that. So I don't know what you're thinking so far. I think we should go through these, but this is fascinating. These are practical ways you can fight against climate change. They're saying interesting, but I I do think that they're making some good suggestions here. Anyway, so are you going to do this one? No, I keep going. I'm running out of 
I'm running out of speed trying to read. Okay, right. Reduce your waste. We need to make wasting our resources unacceptable in all our aspects of life. Everyone's got to agree with us, obviously. Everyone, every product we buy has an environmental footprint and could end up in a landfill. The impact of plastic pollution on our oceans is becoming increasingly clear, having drastic impacts on marine life. This is true. Uh, recycling what we can, what we can, reduces the amount of new materials we are making and upcycling is a creative way to make old items into something more valuable. This could be reusing a jam jar as a candle holder. Who'd have thought? Or using old tins as plant plots. Whew. The possibilities are endless. And it's not just the products we buy. No, 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 no. It's estimated that a third of all food produced in the world is lost or wasted. Do your bit by eating up mouldy leftovers and use any ingredients you have spared to make interesting meals. Try to waste as much food as possible. I mean, as little food as possible. And, and compost the organic waste you can't eat. We're losing viewers here, Pete. Yeah, I think... We, should we just stop there? <laughs> yeah, everyone's left. Yeah, have everyone left? No, we've got four people left. Okay. Well, let's... Uh, let's, uh, let's come on then. Okay, watch what you buy. Yeah. And find ways to give us money. Yes. Right, read the Living Planet Report. Yeah. Volunteer for your world. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Was this useful? Blah, blah, blah. Go on then. Okay, now cut, here's my view. I want, I want to, to know, chase I want to know people's view, right? I think that these are great ideas to spread the word about whatever you want. You should get yourself informed. You should tell not just people who are in positions of power, uh, but you should tell your friends and get a movement started. And you should do practically what you can do. However, there is no scientific basis for believing that any of what they said could change the change in the climate that is happening naturally. It's at all completely and totally pointless. Apart from one thing, they confuse, uh, and are very confused in what they're saying, they're confusing two things, stopping pollution and stopping, stopping global warming, which is what they mean by climate change. They are two different things. Yes, we should stop waste going into the, uh, into the oceans, and you know, it does affect uh, wildlife. Um, I was sort of surprised by the idea of uh, up. Uh, what was it? Upcycling. That's what. Yep. Yeah. Recycling generally, quite often, uses more energy and creates more problems than uh, just simply doing something much simpler, reusing the same thing again. Um, so I think what they're saying is very misguided, um, ill-informed. Uh, but the method of doing it is very useful. You know, to say as a Christian, you want people to know about your faith. That's the way you should go about it, chatting about it with your friends, as well as trying to influence people in power. It's, it's a good way of doing about it. But I just think this uh, idea that you can stop or uh, uh, affect climate change is just, uh, I suppose, hubris on the part of the of people believing. Should I put us both live again? Let's, yeah, yeah, put us no, on. So what the, do you think then? What do the people in the chat think? in your you eyes think? as you're making this comment. What do you think? What do I think? So, did I think we'd get round to talking about climate change at some point? Yeah, I thought, I guess we did. Oh, backache. Um, I think it's. I, I don't think there's a simple solution. I don't think I think it's as complicated as hell itself. All right. I think it's a very, very complex thing. And I think that um, Yes. I think I, I watched something with Jordan Peterson a little while back and um, climate change is obviously a thing on many people's lips and how to tackle it might actually be a completely different track as how to do it rather than suddenly saying let's stop using the natural resources let's stop doing this that, and the other because the impact of what people think that they can achieve is going to be so negligible it's not worth doing in fact the impact That's a very good point. Yes. The, the impact of what they're going to plan to do is uh, going to cost uh, is just not is financially not viable. Yeah, that's one thing. It's going to have such little impact, and actually the impact it will have on us anyway 
will be more detrimental than it would be if we did nothing. Yes. Yeah. There is a problem that exists. 100%. No one's denying that. No, yeah. No, but neither well, of us is denying that no. there is climate change. Absolutely. Well, no. I mean, th don't get me wrong. I've not had this conversation with Pete before. No, no. no um, But this problem does exist. But oh, yeah, the, sure. the speculated solution is wrong. Yes. The speculated solution is wrong. And um, I think this concept of certainly some of those points about getting informed does depend on who you listen to. Yes. Um, yeah. It's an interesting point. Um, okay. there's, there's, a, there's a conceptual idea by a famous young person at the moment uh, of trying to re, uh, reduce the amount of global heating by one and a half degrees over the next whatever number of years. Uh, that's not possible. It's just not possible. In fact, you're going to push the the temperature up by four degrees by the end of the century, and nothing's going to change that. I um, agree. I think nothing's going to change it. That's, yeah. that's really my point. The, I think the, you're better off doing nothing. Well, I think you're better off investing in something. Yeah. Now, it might be that we do need to invest in technology to enable us to get out of this mess that doesn't exist yet. Um, okay. This is by, uh, there's, a, there's a, a guy who came up in comment, uh, I can try and find him, uh, he's, a, he's an, ana an analyst who basically looked up um, the best thing you could probably do to tackle climate change was probably to try and deal with education and poverty in third world. That would be probably the best thing you could do because the long term impact of that yeah. might be that you'd be investing in the future of uh, people's education intelligence might be able to come up with a solution for the problem you've got. Yeah, I mean the problem I have with criticising, I said oh, I could be broadly positive. A lot of the things they said there were good. You know, the thing uh, that I said, well, yes, this is going to, as you were pointing out, Al, this isn't going to affect the temperature of the earth, uh, uh, at least not not significantly. I would say not at all. Uh, but if you're trying to stop pollution, that's good because pollution is bad. Um, the, I mean. So that good things come out of it. You know, highlighting polar bears is great. We want them. Uh, they're great animals, wonderful creatures. Why uh, we, we want people to analyse them. But in fact, since uh, the, the close monitoring of them in the 1970s, there are now four times the number of polar bears than there were at the time. Far from them dying out, there are more and more polar bears each year. Um, there's about 30,000 that we have counted, and that's not including the Russian section where they... They don't publicise the numbers. It's just not true that polar bears are... You, you have a picture of a polar bear on... If you if you look to one of the points on there, there was a picture of a polar bear on melting ice, as though... Here, look. And the, and there's sometimes polar, pictures of polar bears, a film of a polar bear starving to death. Well, I've got bad news for, for David Attenborough and his friends who publicise these, uh, publicise these images. Um... That's the way most animals die in nature. That's what it's like. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the fact that you don't normally show it on 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 a video and show it to people. That the I mean, that was your editorial choice. You could have shown other but animals. Surely, surely, it just isn't true. Right, surely, this, you, know, you know, I'm I'm kind of a bit on the fence uh, because I'm not. Um, see, I'm I'm very keen for stepping back off. A subject matter I don't know enough about, mm, sure. right? Uh, and I'll make a viewpoint of what I believe mm. now, uh, from what I've read and understood, from what I think yeah, are yeah. fairly good sources. So, for one, I do have a huge respect for David Attenborough. I, yeah, and, yeah. You know, he's been producing, yeah. as I've said in the past, some of the most amazing British BBC documentaries on the planet for probably fifty odd years. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I do think he's a great advocate for natural world. Um, I agree he, with all that, yeah. And he will have seen the impact of, I believe he will have seen the impact of um, probably human existence on the natural world. Now That's an interpretation, though. Well, no, I think he probably has. Um, he well, sees something, yes. He sees yeah, something. absolutely. And, and I'm, not, I'm not saying, well, that means he's wrong. But what I'm saying is I'm not sure that what I consider to be a knee-jerk reaction to a problem is to look, right, that's it. No, everyone's got a, we can only have one candle, yeah? And yes. we're going to shut down I all, understand what you're saying, all yeah. electric and no one can, and you've got, well, to, there's no central heat. Right, 
Let's all panic, panic, panic by just yes, stopping the what we see. Yeah, here's an alternative view then. Okay. Yeah. So hang on, let me just yeah, finish. Oh, well, well, you finish. Yeah, yeah I'll I was going to say. So I can see the point of people that I respect, say like David Attenborough, and I think that's great. But my issue is with the solution, oh. not the observation. Because okay, yeah, yeah. this, unfortunately, this poor picture yes. of a polar bear. And you could say it's being taken out of context and, you know, that's kind of natural to see a polar bear like that, even though there's 40 times as many polar bears as there were. Four, four times. Four times, okay. whatever it was, yeah. Um, 400 times. See, if I always go really high, then everyone knows I'm taking the mickey. Yes, so okay. 400 billion times the yes. number of polar bears as we used to have, um, which is a positive thing. Um, they're, very, they're very popular animals. Yeah, but how are they being fed? Is uh, they they feed on the seals, which are so this is totally wild, yeah. So they're well, the, existing the, quite nicely, yeah. Yeah, the seals um, need some sort of algae which grows uh, on the bottom of the thin ice. Yeah. yeah. So what you're saying, the, yeah, so so what you're saying is the, the impact of global warming, melting the ice caps, is not actually reducing the numbers no. of polar bears. No, it's, it seems to be increasing them. Right. Okay. I'm not. And by the way. Um, uh, 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 what I'm saying is that I'm very positive about what they've written there because you see, you just take it from their point of view. They believe uh, this certain uh, view on what's causing climate change, so they believe that. You take that as read. So I was, I was being truthful when I said I'm very positive because if this is a good way of going about advocating for whatever you want want to advocate, so uh, they believe it. Uh, so and they're, what they're talking about is not. Notice they didn't say anything about uh, huge demonstrations uh, they didn't say anything about civil obedience they didn't uh, they were talking about really polite uh, about using the um, political system as it is and about trying to make a change where you, where you are by doing what you can it's a very sensible good approach to what whatever change you're sold on what you believe in now i believe that they're wrong about climate change i don't think there is a crisis at all i think we should do nothing I mean that's my that's my opinion on it. So I wouldn't advocate, you know, say we've got to do this to stop climate change. I would say why? Why do you want to do that? Uh, um, it, it's it'd be pretty good when it's warmer. <laughs> Just I okay, tell you, this is what you do. I, I find that I, 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 this I find, that, I find that. See, the, buy a sun hat. Right. Listen. Okay. Don't, well, don't off, try. Don't let, try and let, stop people getting talk, on airplanes. Let's talk about our comment from chat. So. Uh, Katie says, we have swapped our garden bin for a composting bin and have our own veg and herb garden. Perfect. Bang. Love it. That's, exactly, I mean, that's the great, point. The great that's thing, a great thing to the do. The great thing to do. Um, eating up leftovers. And it's not mouldy old leftovers, Pete. No, it's I leftovers. just put that in. Yeah, I know. It's leftovers. And yeah. I absolutely hate wasting food. Yeah. I really hate All it. All that I agree. By the way, I was saying there were good things in there. Yeah. I think you shouldn't waste so, food. So I think growing your own food is yes, a great idea. Perfect, perfect. I think I am, you should try and stop pollution as much as possible. Yeah. And plastic packaging is a real issue. Yeah. So all these things are true. It's only the global warming, or as they now call it, climate change, because there isn't really the evidence behind the global warming thing being due. Well, I don't know. That, yeah. I, I think we could go on for hours on that. My view... Yeah, absolutely, my, I could. But yeah. my view is I do believe we're having an impact on climate. All right? Okay. But my response You can is, believe that. Listen, listen. Let me give you my, my pitch. Yes, go ahead. If the answer is A plus B plus C equals climate change, yes. removing C, B and A isn't going to fix it. Yes. All right? Correct. That's what I'm saying. Yes. All yeah. right? You might have to do X, Y and Z to make climate change okay. All right? Yes. That's all I'm saying. So I'm not saying climate change doesn't exist, and I think most science people would probably agree that, we have had an impact on our environment, Debatable, all right? Yeah. Um, and we need to be aware of that. We do need to be aware of that. I think that's that, that's true. I, 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 the people who've had an effect on our, on our environment is undeniable, yeah. yeah. It's whether it's what, producing this particular what, effect. What I'm uh, saying is that question. the knee-jerk response, which is to stop doing all the things that we felt um, were causing those things, don't have leftovers. <laughs> Trevor hasn't eaten, a, eaten it, the dog will happily finish there it. There you are, uh, look, you can see. Yeah, um, just removing the things that we believe are the cause of climate yes. change is actually going to have a more of a devastating effect on humanity, yes. probably. Yeah. Yeah, and the outcome will be so small 
that actually it's going yeah. to produce a negative thing okay. rather than a positive thing. So what I'm saying is that there are certain things I think we need to have better forms of energy. Yeah, for sure. There are, you know, there's an abundance of energy. It's called the sun. You know, yeah, if we can use absolutely. better That's... methods of better methods of um, generating energy, then of course that would be great. Yeah, uh, more sustainable, cheaper, that sort of stuff. All right, yes. that would be better for well, mankind. One, uh, well. I'll just make a couple of points because this, the, of, co the, of course, believing that uh, human activity has caused this uh, glo global warming does produce um, panic, and it produces really bad policy. So it ends up you having a tax on things to try and reduce your carbon footprint, which means not how much carbon dioxide you produce. Uh, so you end up having what I see as ludicrous ideas, like switching all the cars to electric cars, as though that's going to have an impact. And it, I mean, I, I don't see how it will, but it, it causes that sort of panic reaction. Well, By the way, electricity has to be produced um, yeah, right. using coal-fired petrol stations. So you're not really changing well, they're anything. Back, going back to nuclear, aren't they? So nuclear but, would be great. Yeah. Yes, nuclear is the yeah, cleanest form of energy. Absolutely. Um, but again, it's not socially acceptable because it's nuclear and it's got you know Fukushima and yeah. Chernobyl kind of written all yeah. over it. So that's what I'm saying. But all I'm saying yeah, is, is I I am not in a position where I deny the fact that something exists as a as a result of what we do and i think that if we were for the next 500 years going to continue to do what we're doing yeah in i think we're going to have a, a big problem on the planet i think that between now and critical mass if you will we would have come up with a solution to solve it and that at the moment panic is probably driving people to make lots of wrong decisions yes yeah and of course when you're a politician trying to win uh voters yeah, you have to appease your voters to get their vote. All right, so policy is written, yeah. and mandated, and this is this is our manifesto. Yeah, whether you actually implement it after you've said you're going to implement it's another story as well. But the point is, you have to do something to get your voters and put yeah. yourself in power but in the first place. If you could just take, like, I know I said, having a, if you had the assumption that they were right uh, about the climate change, this was a good way of, of doing it. But let's uh, take the other assumption. Yeah, you know, just assume that I'm right that actually there isn't an issue. The climate is warming. Actually, that's a good thing. We need to have more carbon dioxide. It's better for plant growth. So that's what I really believe. I think it's good that the climate is warming. But if you so you may disagree with that, whoever's watching this, maybe it's on, on repeat or whatever. But what I'm saying is just assume that I'm right, just as a thought experiment. Then what would be the way that I'd want to get that across? Well, it'd be in the same way, by having talking to my friends as well as trying to influence people in power, writing to my MP, um, talking to people as much as I can, making sure it's a topic on some sort of but live stream the, that I'm doing. But I think the interesting point about climate... It's the same method, that's yeah, what I'm saying, okay. that they're talking about. But that's my the, point. The yeah. problem you've got is you're touching on a subject that it appears that no one seems to know the truth about it. Yeah. Luckily, I'm here and I do. So, yeah. It's good well, job I'm here. Yeah, well... See, I find that quite difficult. Oh, in, do you? Well, yeah, I do, because... Um, I don't. I don't think that the concept of climate change. I think there are. I think the problem with the climate change um, um, subject. Yes. Is that in in my view something exists for sure that regards climate change. Oh yeah, oh, well, I and, think and it's, yeah, climate I, is changing. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, I know, true. I know, yeah, I know, and I, I think yeah, all right. But I think the concern is that the the. Whether it's for good or bad, mm -hmm. all right, is a thing that's still in debate. Yes. Yeah? Because yeah. Well, there's you, of course, it. saying that you know for a fact that it's a good thing. No, no, I, I know for a fact that we can't stop it. Uh, whether yeah, it's a right. good thing or not oh, I thought depends you said, on I, your reaction to I it. I thought you said it was good to be being a bit warmer. Something about... No, no I, that's, I believe that it's better. That's part right, of so it's true. So you said it was a good thing then, right? Yeah, so, yeah. All right, well, I believe that it's a good thing. What so, I'm saying that I was sure about when I said I know that it's a fact, I was sort of, you know... All right, deliberately I think, being controversial, I think, I think but I, that it's um, Listen, that it's not man-made. I think it. You don't think it's man-made? Uh, no, there's no way the carbon dioxide could be the driver of global warming. Just, just in pure chemistry. Just looking at it, how it, there is no mechanism that they've been able to show that would produce that effect. I know there's the. If people do know, it's that there's an attempt to show that there was a multiplier effect. 
the actual we know that the actual cause of uh, increasing temperature is more likely to be to do with water vapor um the, or the less of it allowing for more uh, more of the sunlight See, you, to come in you've just but, hit, you just hit the nail on the head there because you use the term more likely and that's the yes. point it is debatable and there are no. school, uh, well, listen there are schools well there must be debatable no 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 but my point was uh, that was i was saying more likely about some about something i was talking about but what i was saying is that the 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 current theory about how humans affect climate change that it's producing carbon dioxide cannot be true not that it likely isn't true it can't be true because the mechanism isn't hasn't been shown how it could happen and in practice if you look at just take it um we have graphs going back years showing increasing carbon dioxide you can show it going back through history by looking at the plants that were available in ge geological Soil studies and stuff like that, yeah yeah so you can see carbon dioxide goes up and it's it equates with increasing temperature right but here's an interesting fact it happens afterwards the increase in carbon dioxide is due to the increase in temperature the increase in carbon dioxide doesn't cause it it's the wrong way around and everyone knows these graphs are publicly available but they're normally displayed separately if you just put them on the same time scale over each other you see that carbon dioxide was as a result of global warming and not the other way so I just say, I, I, I think, it's just to me, it's just what, I think what so I, obvious. All right, I think what I struggle with is it's almost conspiracy theorist type stuff. In the fact, well, yeah, that that's just an attempt to silence other voices. Yeah, isn't but listen, it? listen to me. It, it's almost conspiracy theorist because if what you were saying was one hundred percent accurate, it is. Why is it that these debates are going on? Well, because why is it that these conversations and these solutions that's are coming not, up? Well, why I mean, that, there may be reasons for that, but that doesn't it, well, it doesn't you, change the you, scientific you, facts, yeah, does it? Right. Well, no, but why is that then? Is that a political reason? Is that a political that's, reason? That's a separate issue. I mean, there's, yeah, there's money. Well, it's no, no, same. it's not a separate issue because what it I'm is. saying is that, is it propaganda? What is it that are making people, certainly the young people... Well, it's people, a comp... I mean, I have looked listen, into it. Certainly the young people of the world really worried about climate change. I know, I know. And I standing think it's up criminal. on podiums and saying, how dare you? Well, this you know, is what is making people do that. Well, this is one of the reasons. Well, one of the reasons behind this is the reason that I, I you know, I say I, I was saying I agree with you about the body of work that David Attenborough has produced, but his recent work, I think, yeah, it's criminal. The fear, uh, the fear and the lies he's propagating, which is just making young people afraid of something when there is nothing to be afraid about. I th we need to calm down. Uh, and what they should be doing is. Yeah, the climate is warming. Let's get ready for it. Well, I said as a flippant thing, buy a sun out. But, you know, you can change the crop, get ready to change the crops over to something else. There's no, and you see, even if, um, let's put it this way, even if uh, they were right, as you say, Al, there's nothing they can do about it. The climate is going to get warmer anyway. So let's prepare for it rather than um, trying to beat it because it ain't going to work. Yeah. Uh, and, and you see, but the, what, what I've found this with lots of things, you don't need a great conspiracy to say, to see why only one idea is allowed. I'll, I'll give you one example just from the science world. Have you ever heard of phlogiston? PH at the start. I've heard of it. Oh, right, okay. I've no idea uh, what it, it is. Well, phlogiston was this substance that. Uh, uh, for, or from the paper when people believed in it, phlogiston was a sort of like a fluid and it transmitted heat. So how does heat move around? Well, it must move around in something. So they said, well, this substance we'll call phlogiston. So how does heat move around from one position in the mother? How does it, how does it move around in a metal? Phlogiston is moving around in the metal. Uh, of course, later we found that uh, uh, heat was actually due to the uh, it was kinetic energy it was due to movement of molecules speed of atoms moving yeah yeah definitely. exactly so phlogiston we found just didn't exist and yet yeah. that was the current scientific theory for years and years after it was known that, uh, that it wasn't necessary for the theory it because it went on lived on because scientists don't uh, just change their mind when the new theory comes along. They keep fighting for their own theory and they try and rubbish everyone else. So if you've got a group of scientists whose careers depend, because they're climate change scientists, whose careers depend on... Climatologists. Change, yes, or climatologists, whatever it might be. No, uh, they, they may be... Their whole career 
is based on it. They, they don't think outside of that paradigm. You know, the assumption is that this is all true, that climate change is man-made. And therefore, they don't think outside of it. And everyone who doesn't agree with them is a conspiracy theorist and that sort of thing. It, it has its own pressure. Yeah, there could be uh, financial pressures as well. But what? Uh, uh, but just one other thing that before we close on this, you know, when I was going to say, uh, I think this is a good method. They've used that method, you see. Uh, they, they've got it wrong, but that it does work. Uh, having the kids educated so they believe in this stuff, then they tell each other. Then you get people, um, uh, young people of the world uniting and saying we've got to have this happen. Then politicians can use them to further their own agenda. Okay, and, well, and it just gets its own right. sort of momentum. Okay, I've got to get the gist. But I think there's two things here that make me think. Uh, the first thing is the intention of the publication of a lie. Yeah. And the second is the belief in what you're talking about is the true, even if it's wrong. Yes. So, almost like that you believe something so much that you will tell everybody about it, because that's what you believe. And of course people yeah. will believe it. But we live in a world and a society now which has got enough scientific people, I think, to be able to point out the truth of the matter to the right people at the right level, G20, whatever you're, you're talking about, to say, look, just watch this video on Wallace Unleashed and listen to Pastor Pete. He knows what he's talking about. And for the world to say, right, OK, now we understand it. Uh, you're saying that a group of scientists, because of their own personal beliefs... No, I, know, I don't mean that. I say most of the scientists within that world... If you come out of that world to what you might loosely call so real why is it Okay, so why is it the people don't see the detrimental effect of this bullshit then, if that's the case? Because uh, I don't know. If I, if, if I had that insight into human character, the, things would be a lot better. Well, all right, let's just take... Know. All I'm saying is if you take every other scientist that's not a climatologist who probably thinks like you're talking about it... Many, I, many scientists agree with me. I'm not a scientist, but, you know, I can read scientific papers. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I just, I, and I did, I, I studied chemistry at, at yeah, university. I know I've got a degree. But so this, is, this is my problem. That's my level, but yeah. I think that's enough to see that it can't possibly but this be is true. My, this is my problem that I think we all face on a day-to-day -day basis is actually seeing the truth, which is why when you said, if it's you hideous. could see something, I just want to see the truth. Yes. Because in the absence of the truth... Yeah, I can be led down a garden path. Uh, let's. Uh, it'll be interesting in the chat. If anyone does, anyone uh, anyone agree or disagree with me? It's so, yeah, okay. It's you know I've been over egging it how um, keen I am on this. I do believe that what I said was true, but I don't mind if you disagree with me. Lots of people do. So uh, anyone in the chat? Uh, I don't know if people are still around, but if you are, you know, say if you agree or disagree, it'd be absolutely fine. Either way, uh, but um, and people, if you're watching afterwards, if you're on. Uh, it, it, you're going to put something in the comments. Say what you think. Um, yeah. You know, because so, I'd be very interested I, to find, you it, know, it, whether I was convincing or not. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know what effect. May, I maybe that's it. He was trying to convince you, see if he could teach you. Mm -hmm. I don't know. For my personal stance, um, I don't side with Pete. Yeah. Um, I don't agree wholeheartedly with what he's saying. Yeah, but um, he will. Huh? I was like, yeah, we will. Well, no, no, you're saying it's all right for chat to make their comments. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm yeah, just yeah, saying the same thing. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I, yeah. I disagree, but I disagree with the other flip side as well. I yeah, think yeah, there's, yeah. there's a, there's a, I'm, I'm struggling with two, two opposites here, where you're one saying climate change is awful, and what we have to do is stop doing A, B, and C, which would just be absolutely awful if we do it. And then I've got the opposing side, which is you saying it's all f fine. There's nothing wrong, and I'm like, and I'm like thinking, hang on, I think there is something wrong. I I do, and whether it's like this is no, no, yeah, listen, yeah, yeah, listen, yeah. there's nothing wrong, and everything's gone tits. Yeah, it might be that it's here, not here. Mm -hmm. yeah. It might be that it's here. Yeah, yeah. All I want is an understanding. It's not that I don't trust you, Pete. I just don't trust you. Yeah. It's like well, you don't. I don't expect anyone to trust me. This is yeah. I expect people I, to look at the evidence. Yeah, um, as, as I've done. So I, I, I'm, I'm really saying, arguing against what, just trusting experts. What Go I'm, and read it up for yourself. What I'm saying is that um, I'd like 
well, I just like the more what I think is the what is probably right is somewhere in the middle. Yeah, of Could balance. Be. Yeah. Could be, might not be. You want to know the truth. But the, the, yeah, it's interesting because, so, uh, I mean, we're towards the end of the show now. I don't know how many people are in chat, but people, people in comments can put if they get this far. You know, what do you think of all this? Uh, is it too controversial? For me, though, um, as we, we close out, this was the, the climate change debate. Um, we, people have tried to pretend that this didn't happen now, but I've seen, went back and found the articles um, that were around at the time. In the 1970s, I was taught about climate change, right? Uh, it's 8K degrees with you. Got one vote for you, thanks. Uh, so, uh, which is not in favour, if that's right, Kay, you're not in favour of that climate change is a big catastrophe. You'll say, oh, there's something wrong and we need a more measured approach, which, you know, is that right? Uh, that's what you're saying, right? Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. She's agreeing with you. I'm just yeah, saying that. I, I think that that, um, I can't believe that this this is. This is as big a problem as... I, right, I can't believe that this is represented as big a problem as it is without some element of it being actually something we need to look at rather than sort of... And I'm not suggesting that you ignore it. Or you're, you're saying that we ignore well, it. No, no, I, what I'm and saying I is... I think that you, you're saying is that, yes, we have had an impact. Um, and that will be... That will I be, think we've had an impact on the environment. I just don't think it's changed, it's caused global warming. And I think that no, no, no. Hang on, that, that's hang, a different, hang on. You're talking different. about global. We're talking about climate change. Yes, fundamentally, and and you, you're, yeah, you're, that's what it, that's what it means. You're saying that climate change is just global warming. Well, well what else is it? Well, I don't, else I don't know. Other, I don't know. I thought they changed. I mean, they. I thought they changed it because global warming got unpopular. No, we're talking about. I mean, climate. Uh, must be if it's, it is. If it's, if it's just, not it's global just, warming, just, then yeah. what is it? I mean, I, well, I is it uh, global I, dimming? If you look that up. Global dimming. Dimming? Have you not read about that? No. What, what is global dimming? I don't know it. I've not heard it. You haven't read about global dimming, have you? No. You look, read that up. Global dimming. Yeah, go on. Do you not know else. about global dimming? No, I don't know about global dimming. No. Really? Why is it? Is it star Jake Gyllenhaal? <laughs> global oh. dimming. Yes. Go ahead. It's in the Collins English. Oh, right. It's in the dictionary definition, yes. The globe is dimming, is it? Right. Yes. So this is the kind of reverse. So this is the decrease in the amount of sunlight reaching the surface of the Earth, but it caused by pollution in the atmosphere. Oh, okay. I'd, I'd not heard of the term. No, that's fair yeah. enough, yeah. So that's global dimming, all right? So all I'm saying is, for me, I am not a scientist with any anywhere near the level of understanding i haven't even got the p potential of argument to say you're wrong you're right or whatever all i'm saying is that from what i kind of sense from people i feel i can trust or i'm i feel more trustworthy to listen to that a problem exists that is affecting the environment and our climate and everything that goes on on planet earth all right, I believe that something okay. exists, yeah. and I think it's something. I, I we, admire your faith, and I, I think that we need to be aware of it, okay. and we need to understand its long-term impact. Yeah, I think we should be making um, assumptions of, say, the impact of it to make um, knee-jerk reactions that are going to have devastating effects on mankind no, I, I and, agree, yeah. and the planet. So, therefore, it needs to be a measured response. So. It might be that over time, and we've been talking about global, the environment and global warming for probably the best part of 30, 40 years with some sense of seriousness for the last 20. Yes. And I, I find that weird that a subject that is so easily defined um, in your... Yeah, it's all, it's, in your, um, in, it's, assumptions, that, it's, it's yeah. the assumptions that are wrong. Well, There's well, an assumption well, my, well, my issue is is how that how that information is being disseminated to the masses. Well, so the, 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 you've you've talked about it at length. Uh, you thought uh, um, there's the there's the use of the young people to um, to promote it. We started with how that was being done, and uh, you know BBC documentaries showing dying polar bears. They just have it. These things have a huge impact. On people's psyche. Um, unfortunately, they don't. They don't. 
agree with the you know they're not showing you the science they're just showing you emotive energies uh, but what i was going to say earlier is i remember back in the 1970s the big problem was global cooling mm. people now deny that because they don't want to admit that everyone did think there was global cooling now that's that's a very interesting thing because here i'm going to make a prediction now right. i i think that uh the global warming is happening whether or not it's positive that wasn't the claim i was making the claim i'm making is that it's natural and you can do nothing about it. It's there was global warming that we could we used to have ice ages, yeah, and yeah. then we came out of the ice age. Was that used to humans before humans were around? I don't think so. So it, it's it's happened no, all no, the no. time. No, no, absolutely. So what? Yeah, so on, what I'm no, so what I'm yeah. saying is not that it's a good thing, but that you've got to make the most of it. The the, the global warming is going to happen, whatever you do. We didn't cause it, and we can't stop it. But something can stop it. Uh, I think something is going to slow it. I think there is an overall, we see an overall rise in temperature and it's going to continue. Uh, but something is going to stop it and there's going to be, in, in the next 10 to 20 years, there's going to be some global cooling. And the, my reason for that is to do with uh, sunspot activity. Um, so, sunspot activity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the cycles of sunspot activity, it's a bit chaotic as in, you know, it's due to the... To the explosions of gases on the sun so it, it's literally a chaos event yeah uh, but so i don't actually know but the likelihood is as far as i understand it is that there'll be a long period without sunspots sunspots although they look darker under a, a tele when you look through a telescope um or rather display with a telescope on a screen yeah, yeah, don't, look on, at, yeah. don't look yeah, directly yeah, yeah, yeah. um uh, the sunspots are actually giving out more energy so when you have no sunspots for a long period you get global cooling and if this happened last happened uh at the time i forget the exact year 18th century i believe when the thames froze over uh there was a period of global cooling uh a short period it's going to it seems to be continuing up but there'll be a cooling down now what will happen then if we spent all our energies on things this is your point Al. we spent so much energy we spent so much money with uh, ruin people's lives in order to try and stop global warming and it starts cooling. No, no, it, it'll be more than just ruining people's lives. It, it will people kill will many, die. many people, yes. Yeah, and people I, will die if you make... This is a serious make, prediction yeah, and absolutely. there's been proper research done well, on it, I think, I think um, the point, particularly in Japan. Right, OK, I think going to the point that you're talking about, certainly with um, ice ages and the, the, the repeating of ice ages mm. and things like that... Climate changes. Yeah, the climate does change. and It's I, natural. I, yeah, absolutely. And there is that. I, I appreciate that as well and I... I believe that to be the case. Mm. Because, of course, when the last Ice Age occurred, mankind had nothing to do with that. Yes, All right. Correct. And I think what the assumption is at the minute is that when the next Ice Age comes, that mankind will have nothing to do with yeah. that. Yes. But I'm slightly sceptical skeptical on the basis that actually when the last Ice Age occurred, the population of humankind... The advances in technology, the industrial revolution, everything that we've managed to achieve, uh, and I think fantastic that we have. Yeah, it, it's a cycle in technological development, uh, which is great, and will complete. Will continue to develop in a technological yes, way. Yeah, I hope but so. more cleaner fuels for all of that sort of stuff. Yeah, whether we have an impact that might bring a bearing on the next ice age or the next heating up or whatever um i suppose the question is is if it's as simplistic as right well uh if we've had if we've had climate change in the fact that the temperature of the earth goes up by four degrees have we had that before yeah he's more than that yeah so well, then we'll look to re recreate the well, um, ice, ice, uh, ice. Well, the thing is, well, um, hang on. Listen, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look to recreate the icebergs uh, <laughs> in the future when we cool down again. Yeah, the thing is, um, carbon dioxide is is very good. It's not it's not a poison. It's 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 excellent for plant growth. And if we had in the past, there was high high amounts of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. It's such a tiny amount, anyway. It can't. That's that's you know when I said there is no mechanism, you need to have a multiplier effect. Everyone agrees with that, even people who are advocating saying it is man-made. They're not saying that the amount of carbon dioxide can do it. Mm. They're saying it has a multiplier effect in that, right, it has an effect which produces more water vapour. That's their claim. Yeah. Um, and so 
that's all very well, but they affect they forget one thing about the natural ecosystem of the earth, right? It has a, as um, uh, you, you know the uh, the idea of homeostasis in your body. Your mm. body keeps the same temperature. Yep. If it gets too hot, it you sweat, etc. If yep. you get too cold, you shiver. Yep. Uh, natural systems have this, including the earth. If there's too much carbon dioxide, it tends to be absorbed. If there's too much water vapor in the air, it rains. You know, it, it, these things have a way of evening themselves out. And so it's not going to have the direct effect. Just because you produce more carbon dioxide doesn't mean that it stays there in the atmosphere. And so the the effect is lower than, than is often assumed. And also, it, carbon dioxide itself, because of the low percentage, can't have the effect of of um, increasing the temperature. I mean, do you know why um, carbon dioxide is thought to increase the? Uh, do you know why it's thought to do that? To do what? Uh, to increase the temperature of the Earth. I said it's to do with water vapor. Well, does it prevent? Um, doesn't heat bounce off the Earth and get trapped? Yes, yeah, yes. It's it's meant to be like a greenhouse, a greenhouse effect. effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what they believe is happening. But there are other effects of water vapor. If you have more water vapor, you get more, can get more clouds. More cloud cover means cooling. So it's not, I, I believe it's been too simplistic. Um, and I say this not because I'm a great scientist in, the area, in this area, but because I've read, and if you go on YouTube, there are some great videos of, mm. of people giving lectures on this subject. And these are people who aren't climate change scientists. They're physicists, meteorologists, you know. Uh, they're outside of the little bubble that's been created. Okay, let me find this bloke. I've just realised his surname. Who's that? Um, Who is he? I'm sure it's. I that. think we're we're coming to an end soon on the show. So yeah, I found it. If you're if you're still watching, thanks for staying with us. Yeah, okay, so here we go. I'm going to bring this across. Yeah. All right, and this this guy might actually be very much signing with you. I haven't had the time yet to know. research this, um, but I was, I was sent, um, I was sent looking for this off the back of a, a a Jordan Peterson thing. I think the climate issue is that humans are causing things to change quicker, and they are urging us to slow things to allow climate to change more naturally. Yeah, I, well, I think that is what they're saying. Uh, my contention is, you know, we're free to disagree, of course is that humans are not causing things to change quicker. That's, that's really what I'm saying. And that, yeah. Um, okay, you ready for this? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, and then we'll finish up. So this guy, um, this, I mean, yeah, I mean, it just says it all, really. Let's fade this across. So let's go to this first question on here. Yeah, I don't know this chap, but yeah, uh, false alarm. I got a so this idea. is Bjorn Lomborg, mm -hmm. right? And this guy, so false alarm, I think was his first book. How climate change panic costs us trillions, hurts the poor, and fails to fix the planet. All right. Uh, research reveals negligible impact on the Paris clim climate promises. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is that half a degree trade offs are for global do gooders. Um, this guy was the only person that Jordan Peterson could come back with with some level of response to a question he was asked at a university talk um, with regards to how we're going to fix climate change. To which Peter Jordan, uh, Jordan Peterson, I always do that, that must be my Peter Jordan, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jordan Peterson said, that is massive. It's absolutely huge and complex. All right, It's a real complex nightmare, and what is kind of being suggested by the climatologists and all this is just a nonsense. The only person that's come up with anything remotely that sounds right and looks like it's going in the right direction is what Bjorn Lomborg talks about. Yeah. And I have yet to look this up. So uh, I'm certainly ill-prepared for this conversation. But I would suggest that if you have time is go and look up Bjorn Lomborg because he might actually have more information that is uh, uh, good evidence to support your claim. Um, um, yeah, and, he and seems might... to be saying about the... Uh supporting what I'm saying and more what you're saying I think for what he's saying that he's saying the the effects that are, the the um the proposed methods of stopping cooling change uh, stopping climate change or slowing it are more dangerous uh, than than the than they're worth I think that's what he's saying for, for I only know that I've not read his book that's no no I can see you're seeing it by the um yeah. By just the images and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. So but yeah. it seems like, it, yeah, I mean, as I say, I'm convinced, you know, that what I said was true from, from what I've seen in the evidence. But you see, in all these things, um, 
I, th I think it's great if scientists fight their cause uh, and you fight your case and all ideas should be out there. I'm really happy for people to disagree on things. The problem is not that, though. All sides of the argument are not out there. You may, uh, do, do people remember the chap David Bellamy? Mm, yeah. Do you remember David Bellamy? Yeah. He said exactly what I've just said about climate change. He was a well-known uh, BBC presenter. He was sacked for saying it. His entire career was put in ruins. Because he said what I just said, and he said I can't, um, you know, in conscience say anything else mm. because it's true. All right, well, there you go. Read that. There's a so quote. there, there are consequences. Only one side is allowed <coughs> in polite company. Okay. Uh, it's only on live streams like this that you'll get me being allowed to say it. Yeah. Okay. So read the about on uh, Bjorn. And then we'll okay. Wrap it up. Yes. We're about Do half yeah. hour over anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so Dr. Bjorn Lomberg is president of the Copenhagen Consensus Centre. Visiting fellow at the Hoover Institute, Stanford University, visiting presenter, professor, sorry, of Copenhagen Business School. The Copenhagen Consensus Center is a think tank that researches the smartest ways to do good. For this work, Lomberg was named one of Time magazine's 100 most influential people in the world. His numerous books include False Alarm, How Climate Change Panic Costs Us Trillions, Hurts the Poor and Fails to Fix the Planet. He doesn't mince his words, does he? The Skeptical Environmentalist, Call It, and How to Spend $75 Billion to Make the World a Better Place. The Noble Horrid's Guide to the Smartest Targets for the World, 2016 to 2030, and Prioritising Development, a Cost-Benefit Analysis of the UN's SDGs. And I think that the Cost-Benefit Analysis is what you're talking about. It hasn't been done. Oh, I mean, I think that's the, that is the issue. That is the problem. But the, oh yeah, hang on. Just got he's meeting Dodgy Dave there. Uh, you know, uh, sorry, um, isn't he? No, it isn't. That's uh, who's that? That's uh, the climate change guy, the man who invented the internet. What's his name? Um, <laughs> what's his name? That guy, oh, American politician. He was going to be president. Isn't that that chap? Is it um, Al? Al Gore. Gore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it yeah, Al Gore? Yeah. In a, in an interview, he he said he invented the internet. Um, uh, he, and in a way, he did. He change laws uh, allowing for the internet to exist you know given the freedoms that they you know so he was it just was a, sounded a bit grandiose but people like to laugh at him for saying it but i thought i'd better point out that actually in, interesting Lom lombog is a frequent commentator in print and broadcast media outlets including uh, the new york times heard, yeah, the wall street yeah, journal yeah. the guardian cnn fox and the bbc uh, His monthly column is published in multiple languages by dozens of influential newspapers across the continent. Yes, well, great. Chat. It's interesting. I hadn't heard of him, but, you know... There you go. It goes both There's ways. He probably hasn't heard of us. Um, no, he definitely... Look, we've gone up to six people. Yes. I think uh, Bjorn Lomborg has just joined. Yeah, yeah. Bjorn, it's great to have you. Um, yeah. Just one, you know, uh, who does your hair? I mean, that's what I want to know. Just, oh, yeah, absolutely. What a man, yeah. Uh, but he is uh, he's an, an analyst, and yes, he... I mean, some people would say that style went out of fashion in the eighties, but I wouldn't say that because uh, I'm kind. Plus. Yeah, well, you're sporting the same thing, just without the blonde, aren't you? Who me? Yes, actually, yeah, I've got this is uh, beautifully right. Confused. Look, yeah, I'm going to draw it. I'm going to draw it, um, guys. We've saved the world again. Look what we did. We cancelled um... climate change. Well, you tried to. Yes. Me and Kate said, how old your horses a little bit? Yeah. And then we come away saying, let's go research what this bloke says. Yes. Yeah. Let's see what he says. Uh, and and go to the virtualvicar.com and see what I had to say in longer videos on it. Did you? Mm. Yeah. So tell me, Pete, next week, how many hits you have on those longer videos. Yeah. Of your, yeah. your prediction on climate change being the biggest load of horses' ass the world has ever seen. I haven't used that phrase, but I like it. I will use it in my next video on it. <laughs> right, everyone. Look, lurkers, Thanks for coming. Lurkers, commenters, all of that stuff. We know there are quite a few it's lurkers great in the background. that you guys yeah. have been here with us We know tonight. you're there. Um, we see you. We're still working on content. We're getting there. I think I think I might got me looking slightly better this week, uh, as in not completely blown out with lights yeah. and stuff. I don't think it's possible for you to look better. Oh, thanks, say, man. But in real life, but, um, I like that. I like yeah, that. Thanks, but, uh, yeah the, image, the image did look better. Uh, yeah, I yeah. think we're getting there. I think technically we started better this week. Um, so that's good. So we're going to keep trying it, to work I and think, improve. And any questions on this? Uh, uh, my feeling is that the serious content, I mean, not necessarily me banging on about climate change, but the serious content seems to work better. You can have humorous bits in it. 
Uh, it, it's just my feeling that he did. Uh, I think it needs a better mix. Yeah. I think it needs a better mix, and we need to Maybe sort too of... much light-hearted stuff, yeah. Well, I don't know. Is it too much light-hearted? I don't know. I'm asking the... Asking. Asking for, chat. For input. Tell me. And not necessarily now. Yeah, I reckon, I reckon there are phones and TVs just running this on Twitch, and people have sodded off to bed. Yes. And just left it running for the numbers. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how that means we've gone up then. So, yeah. all right, cool. No, no, it doesn't Look, work. I'm going to run the intro. And I'm well, going to as the outro. As the outro. And say, guys, we'll see you next week. Have a great week. Take care. Yeah. And watch out for that global warming. Look after the polar bears. What is it? He wants the last word. Shall I give it to him? Yes. Have a heart. <laughs>